Today is Friday, July 12th, 2024, and you're listening to the Ask a Christian podcast. I'm your host, Nate. All right, today we talked to some people we've recently got to know a little bit. Uh, we talked to them more today, Rebecca and Locked. Um, you know, all we have is handles. Who knows what anyone's real name actually is on these places. Anyway, so we talked to them a while. We meet both of them about the same time, and we got to know both of them about the same amount. Well, today they meet each other. <laughs> one is very Calvinist. One is very not. So it's it's funny to see the um you know like the the veterans of these battles Calvin Arminian discussions uh who have who have made peace with each other and we can just kind of take it in stride to to watch like these new people um who have the same exact arguments um, except they they're just meeting for the first time it's true like Ecclesiastes says there's nothing new under the sun. This this wheel is just going to keep turning until the Lord takes us home. Which, yeah, I mean, if that could happen, like, in the next ten minutes, that'd be super, because I'm just over it. Um, <laughs> okay, anyway. Um, happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy Friday. Smile, everyone. All right. So, uh, yes, w- they talk about this a lot. I do my best to moderate. Um, I don't know how I do, but, yeah, they... they it gets spicy, real spicy, real quick. It starts off nice, and then gets real spicy. It's like a Bible girl cat fight. Is that... The patriarchy pronouncing... Anyways. So, then we get into what makes an apostle. Um, Then we talk about prophecy and does God speak to you? And someone raises the question, if God doesn't speak to you when you pray, how do you even know you're saved? (laughs) Oh, so uh, imagine the responses you get in a very Calvinist and very not Calvinist room. Um, So, get your popcorn and uh, let's get ready to rumble. Was that copyrighted? (laughs) Anyway. So, yes, that's what we have. So, like, subscribe to this thing, and share these links, and we will see you next week. Have an awesome weekend, everyone. Good morning. What's up? Oh, another day. Ready for the weekend. How's your Friday morning <laughs> I going? I feel you. Same. I'm just up editing some content, getting started. Just got done walking my dog, so. Uh, me too. What kind of dog do you have? Um, I have a lab mixed with a pit. Also, a labrable. Oh, a labrable? That's, I've never heard of that. I know. Yeah. Cairo. He's two and a half. What kind of dog you got? Uh, mutt. How does that make you feel, Mac? I'm sorry. You're beautiful, <laughs> Mac. Uh, he's staring at me. He's like a, he's like a terrier mix. He's mostly terrier, but, uh, he's, I, I think he's got like a little bit of like a boxer or bulldog in him. He's got like a little underbite. Like it's, it's funny. He looks, he looks like one of the, he looks like one of those Picasso, is it one of the Picasso paintings where they're all like weird, jagged rectangles and angles? And it's like, oh my gosh, that's hideous. But it's like, it's, it's cute at the same time. You're cute, Mac. You're so he's cute like boy. ugly. Cute he's boy. ugly cute. I get it. Yeah. God bless everyone. What's up, Rebecca? You okay? Here, oh, hello, Vice President Chris. How's your day going? Pretty good, President Putin. I finally uh, caught you guys. I'm always asleep when you go live. I finally caught it. Yep. Well, you made glad. it. Yeah, I got started a little early today, so. Glad well, you can you do up. this every day? Because then I can catch it. Right. <laughs> Just set your whole schedule around me, please. We already do. <laughs> I, I try to accommodate. So, oh, um, Rebecca. Have you had any conversations yet? No, we I, just I literally here. just started. Um, do you, do you get how many people come up? Yesterday oh, we yeah. did. Well, so like, it's like the floodgates. It's like a dam that slowly builds and there's like a couple people and everyone's kind of like, got anything to say? Not really. Got anything to say? Not really. And slowly, like, you know, people raise their hand, which always confuses me. It's like people raise their hand to like, you know, come to the stage because they want to talk. So I invite them. I'm just like, hey, what's going on? They're like, nothing. I'm like, what do you want to say? And they're like, nothing. I'm like, why did you raise your hand? They're like, yeah, I don't know. I'm like, I... do you anyway, have so like... like they have on TikTok? Do what? So like, if if you was in a conversation, someone was being disrespectful, can you like, is the moderators where they can disconnect them and stuff like that? Yeah, yeah, that that usually happens a couple times a day. Um, well, it, yeah, it's so needed, like, isn't it? Really, it is. And so after you get, like five or six people and no one wants to talk, like the stage gets full. And then one person comes up and like throws a grenade in the room and they're like, Hey, what do you think about this? And then like all 10 people want to talk at the same time. So it goes from like, no one talks to incredibly chaotic. And yeah, that's, that's usually how it goes. You should have been here yesterday. It was great. 
Yeah, the other day I was talking about how the patriarchy is good and right, Rebecca. Which we will not be going into again today. Oh Let's my, just have... please don't for... trigger me. <laughs> all right, Chris, for I a Friday. I don't have a to... or anything like that anyways. Just, just ignore him. Chris, all right, it's Friday. Just give me nice, easy softball topics to sail off smoothly into my weekend. I've got an easy topic for you. <laughs> yes. Did God predestine sin in the garden? That one's quite easy. <laughs> this lady is I'm just awesome. joking. You haven't got to go into that. I'm just joking. So wait, Rebecca, are you you're you're in Australia, but you sound British? Or is it just a particular Australian accent? No, um I am um originally from England and I moved here just two years ago. Uh, wow, good sense. ear, Chris. Yeah. Yeah. Do you get many theological discussions, like not just debates on different religions? Do you get many theological discussions between the Christians? Uh, yes. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's a mix match. Like, we never know what we're going to get. But yes, there is. Uh, well, Chris, what are some of the deeper theological Christian discussions we've had? I mean, yeah, I, I mean, geez, I mean, I mean, the Trinity. Like, we, we've gone very deep into that to where my brain's running out of my ears. Um, you know what? Since I've been on TikTok and listening to all the Trinity debates, and I've learned so much. So obviously before, I could obviously defend the Trinity, but you know now, it's like, nobody can deny it to me. I'm not having it. Like, I can defend the Trinity like no tomorrow now. I've heard that many debates now. Um, sorry, go on. Uh, no, yeah, Chris, what do you think is one of the big theological in-house discussions we have amongst Christians? I mean, we've talked about spiritual gifts. We've talked about um, giving. We've talked about um, some big theological topics. I mean, obviously, we've talked about election. And, you know, I've gotten Nate to buy into uh, compatibilism, which is good. And uh, so Nate's now a secret Calvinist. And because once you buy you into mean, compatibilism, you mean he's a closet over, Calvinist. Right? He's a closet Calvinist, yes. Come out the closet now. No, I mean, Chris Look made a good party. point one time, and I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, Chris made a good point one time, and I'm like, hey, that could be useful. And now Sorry. I'm like the high prophet of Calvinism. I know I've got the kids in the background, and I always forget to mute when I'm not talking. Sorry. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> Wait, when did y'all um, have the spiritual gifts conversation? I missed that. Oh, pick up Are you also that. saying that? What'd you say? We've done that five or six have times. Have y'all really? Are you all? I, no, I just got excited about that because I don't. Nobody ever touches that conversation. I feel like people are scared of it. I don't well, know let's, why. Let's touch on it. So there's see, see what I mean. There's like two people talking. So so one um de depends depends how you find cessationist, but um uh like like Chris all day um under the working definition we use here, it, yes, me too. Uh, under the traditional understanding that that people have that is wrong, I I would not be. <laughs> so so it depends on defining terms. But I mean, in the sense that, uh, I mean, yeah, we can you know two birds one stone, so we can help walk out too. So as far as spiritual gifts, like uh, the, the actual way, it, yeah, the, the ex, actual way it should be uh, this defined is you know do people have the at will like apostolic gifts. Uh, like I could just walk around and clear out a hospital by healing people because I have that gift innate in me that I can use at will. Um, no, um, most people you will find, even people who say they're not sensationist, when they when you give them that definition, they would say, well, well, no, because there's there's nowhere to go with that. Otherwise, go clear, find someone that has this gift and go yeah. clear out a hospital. And obviously they can't do that. So they're like, yeah. oh, well, if you mean by that definition, we're like the right definition, they're like, well, then no. So, I mean, most people will concede to that when you give them that definition. But uh, but that's well, but well, the yeah. biblical definition, well, like it's the actual. OK, so I'm passionate about this topic. I, all the uncommon topics I like. I'm tired of talking about grace and the love of God and the same thing. No shade. I'm not trying to be a cynic. But <laughs> I'm just really bored I'm with God's the grace. I'm just saying I love God's grace, but I feel like it's a hyper grace movement where people just are obsessed with grace and want to use it as like a get out of jail free card and it gets on my nerves. But as far as the gifts is concerned, 
the literal definition, whether I think it's touched on in Ephesians, Galatians, and Corinthians. So apostle is an office. And I think people don't understand the difference between office and a gift. An office is like, that has to do with identity. That's like your, that's like the, your behavioral function in the body of Christ. Whereas your gifts is more so like, um, it says each are proportioned according to your faith. And I believe the grace that is given. So the gifts is pretty much like how the Holy Spirit works through you to do supernatural works for the common good. And as the father wills to like help others, but an office is is like when it comes well, let, to what you well, like call yeah, let me, let me, and hang, hang on. I, I'm sorry to interrupt you. But yeah, let, let me just finish what I was saying because I think that will I think that will clear up the disconnect because I see what you're saying. So no one's talking about the office of apostle. So we're not talking about the office of apostle. Let me rephrase. So for example, um, in your spiritual gifts, um, we don't believe someone is granted a gift that they could be like. Whenever you said at the Father's will. Sure, I can get behind that because it's all it's all because God allows it and you know God it's God breathed, it's God done. So God doesn't just like we believe bless someone with like the gift of healing, so you can just like go heal anyone you want. So we don't believe that. However, I believe that you know you can totally pray for healing and God can grant healing to a person, but you can't you can't expect that one hundred percent of the time. And then if we're talking about mundane gifts, right, like the greatest of these is love or charity or like these things that you would not call supernatural. Sure. I mean, you could call that like secular people would call that personality traits. Like if you have the gift of charity or, the, or like hospitality or something <clears throat> mundane like that. Well, sure. That's just like who you are. That's how God's like made your personality bent to be. So it, it, I like we, I think even Chris would say, sure, if you have the, you know, the quote gift of something that's not supernatural like that. Um, sure. Go ahead. Use that at will like that. I don't think anyone's disputing that. That's just who you are. Uh, but but when we're talking about specifically like supernatural gifts, like the gift of, you know, uh, prophecy, right? Like um, like prophecy that would need to be like written down as scripture. Like, like no, we don't believe anyone has that authority. Um, I believe, I think Chris would differ, that, you know, if, if someone feels like, you know, God would, would um, I, I don't know, kind of like inspire someone to share a positive message or a Bible verse, um, that's totally fine. D does that help at all? Like, so like forget office of apostle, like. If that's how you heard it, that was. Can I add to that, Nick, please? No, um, I, hold on a second, Rebecca. Um, no, I was, I didn't hear you say office of apostle. I heard you say apostolic gifts. So that was the reason why I went in that route. I went with it because there is no scripture that says apostolic gifts, but it is a scripture that says the office of apostle. And I think that there's this misconception with offices where it's like, it's not a gift for you to be a pastor. It, a office is a calling. It means this is your job in the kingdom of God. That's not a gift. That's living right. like and, a lifestyle, just like and a, no one's. Yeah, no one's talking about that. So if that's yeah, what you yeah, thought yeah. I was saying, no. You yeah, know, no, no, no I got you. No, I got you. I, I understand that. But in regards to the gifts and what <laughs> you're saying with character traits and things like that, um, that's when I think that you have to go by fruit. And I think a lot of people go off of how they feel. I think that's my biggest irritation with the body of Christ. It's always about feelings and opinions, and it's never about facts. There's no scripture that says the gifts were done away with. I know some Christians feel like, that ended with the apostles. Show me a scripture that says that. And then that's the only way I'll agree with that. It doesn't say that. But it does. Excuse what me? Scripture? 1 Corinthians 13 says, as for prophecy, it will cease. As for tongues, they, as for prophecy, it will fade away. As for tongues, it will cease. For when well, that I think which is we perfect, need the, come. Right, but uh, context is everything. And so, like, to isolate yeah, we'll one read verse. It from the start of the chapter right to the end. Well, right? first off, well, first off, Rebecca, let me finish, sweetie. Please. My name's not sweetie. Thank okay, you. Okay, well, I, I don't oh, even know. Oh, I'm going to have know, such a great Friday. I don't even know your name, but just, con you know, cutting it off. It says, service, Rebecca. It's cutting, off, says Rebecca. cutting off cutting off stirs contention so let's not do that it literally says rebecca okay i name. heard you rebecca now can i finish without you cutting me off i'd appreciate that like we could keep it respectful i'm very respectful but i find it hard when you make a proclamation about the word but God guess God what you finding it hard kill your flesh and ask the lord to give you the spirit of self-control i have nothing i to am do with that i am struggle. killing the flesh i'm killing i the have nothing to do with that struggle that's none of my business that doesn't mean you should get we to be doing something off. chris she made a proclamation that the Bible says that. I did not, excuse me, I didn't, actually I didn't make a proclamation. That's not the definition of proclamation, what I just did, so you're wrong. 
All right, Mux, uh, go you ahead and say what you want to say, Mux. Just hey, hang on, hang on. Wait, wait, wait. Rebecca feels entitled. Rebecca feels entitled to cut me off right now. Button. Where's the mute all button when you need one? Vox, go ahead and finish your point, and then Rebecca, uh, respond with whatever you want to. Uh, go ahead, Vox. Okay, no problem. So I'll land with, um, uh, so yeah, I made that statement, um, which was clearly triggering. And then in regards to the gifts, it's the works of the Holy Spirit. We know that. And so if you have the Holy Spirit in you, he will bear witness to you to confirm if it's him working through somebody by way of a gift, or he will let you know if it's another spirit that's doing so. I mean, you you just use the Holy Spirit to lead you in the truth of all things, so you don't need no man to. So it really shouldn't be any concern about sensationalism or falsehood, because if you have the Holy Spirit, you'll be able to discern and you'll know if it's legit or not. I mean, it's that simple to me. So Rebecca, go ahead and respond, and then I'll bring Chris into this. Thank you. Yeah, so Locked, I'm sorry if you thought that I was disrespectful. I didn't really mean to be um, <coughs> disrespectful. So I do apologise on behalf of that. Um, but when you say that the Bible doesn't say something, and it clearly does, that does trigger me a lot, yeah, because you're saying things that the Bible doesn't say. So first of all, there isn't a Christian on the earth that would say that the spiritual gifts have ceased because being a teacher is a spiritual gift. Our salvation is a spiritual gift. I am the most charismatic person in the world when it comes to that because my salvation alone is a spiritual gift. Now, there is certain gifts that was for the apostles there is nowhere in scripture you will see that the apostle the gift was given out without an apostle present um the sign gifts so what was given to the apostles is only spoken of in two places of the bible in the book of acts and in the book of corinthians it's unfortunate that some churches base their whole doctrine their whole everything upon tongues and prophecy when it's a thing that's only mentioned twice you made the claim that there is nowhere in the Bible that says that tongues have, uh, do not cease. And it's very clear in 1 Corinthians chapter 13 that tongues and prophecies will cease when that which is perfect has come. Now, some people say that which is perfect is Christ's return. Christ is never referred to as a that. It's a neuter. It's not a personal pronoun. It, the Greek will not allow it to be a personal pronoun. So that's out the equation. There's only two perfect things in the world. One is the word of God, one is the Bible. So we've got nothing else to look at but the canon of scripture. That when we have the full canon of scripture, there is no need for fragments of tongues and prophecy anymore. Uh, what was the other point that you made? Um, apostleship isn't just a criteria of a, an office. The, um, there is a whole criteria to be an, an apostle. That you had to, one of them, see the resurrected Christ. So therefore, cease as apostles today because I don't believe anybody today has seen the resurrected Christ. So when you see all these names on Facebook and TikToks and whatever, apostle, whatever, it's a lot of absolute rubbish. Um, yeah, and what was the other thing that you said? I can't remember now, let me think. I can't think what the other thing what you said was. I don't know if I've addressed every point there, but if I haven't, uh, get back to me because I can't remember. Uh, well... Um, I, I, I was letting you guys go because I do appreciate the different views. I mean, it's basically the same argument like everyone has every day, but it's two new people doing it. So, I mean, you know, I, I appreciate both of your participation. And I want to say, like, you know, this is not a Calvinist room. It's not an Arminian room. It's a, it's hopefully the idea is a big tent room, right? So it's like a salvation issue room. So as long as, you know, everyone as biblically accurate as we can, as we can determine uh, checks off the, like, primary issues, the salvation requirements, then, you know, like secondary stuff. People will fight, but we, we try not to because, you know, it's like, look, if you fight over, I, I don't know, free will or this stuff or whatever, and it's like everyone has Jesus as their Lord and Savior and eternal life, you're going to have to figure out a way to spend an eternity in heaven anyways. It's going to happen. So, you know, may as well start now. That's the idea. That being said, yes, heated discussions happen constantly. Um, just listen to Chris a little while later. Um, but on that note, Chris, I'm sorry. Am I picking on you too much? I feel bad sometimes. Is, is it still good fun or is it turning bad? Oh, I can take it. I'm pretty <laughs> thick-skinned. All right, Chris. So what, what do you have to say? What's your take on this? Right. So. To be yeah. fair, you make fun of me for having an Android phone constantly. So we're even. Well, okay, go true, ahead. Because you deserve every <laughs> minute of it. What's um, hilarious is there's somebody actually listening called Apostle. I'm the Rup. Go on. Prove to me that it's... you are an Apostle. I've used in the resurrected. Good Christ. morning. Get rid of that demon you got for an Android phone. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, Chris. That's right. Before we talk about the, the Apostle the Sean, phone we need some I deliverance have. ministry for Nate's phone. I'm gonna put some oil. Well, I'm gonna lay some oil on him and put lay hands on him. He'd be all right. All right. Please, working on that, Chris. What's your take on the uh, what's your take on the spiritual gifts, Chris? 
So, right. So I'm going to And then Sean agree. will say the exact opposite. <laughs> so go right. ahead. Right, yeah. I mean, look, I, without getting deep into it, what I would say is that uh, what we class as the apostolic sign gifts, i.e. the exercise of a miracle power at will, a la Peter in Acts, as he is walking along the road, or whatever it is, um, and people are trying to get into his shadow or put their loved ones into his shadow so that they would be healed. That is the kind of apostolic power that established the apostles to be able to write the New Testament, to be able to authorize the writing of the New Testament, i.e. Mark and Luke, um, as well as um, have authority in the churches, right? So Paul always introduces himself as an apostle. Um, because he was granted authority by Christ to have authority over churches that he didn't even found. Um, and uh, I think that when we talk about the sign gifts, uh, we, we also have to understand that spiritual gifts are not given to people. Spiritual gifts are given to the church, right? So um, they are performed through people, but they are given to the church. So a gift of healing is not uh, Benny Hinn getting the gift of healing and then exercising that gift of healing. It is that Rebecca has, you know, lung cancer and she is miraculously healed. God heals more today than he ever has in history. Um, and that is a gift both to Rebecca and to the church. And if it happens that her elders laid hands on her and she was healed, it wasn't that the spiritual gift was given to her elders. The spiritual gift was the healing that was given to the testimony of the church. And so I think that we have to be really clear, you know, exegetically what we're talking about when we are talking about gifts. These are not things that are given to individuals um, except for the apostles. Uh, in terms of the sign gifts to establish their authority. These are things that are given to the church, and Paul makes this quite clear in 1 Corinthians 12. And uh, real quick, uh, hey again, uh, Random, I tried to accept your invite. If, if it was an accident or if you can't get up, let me know, because um, I, I tried, so maybe it's a bug. Just let me know if you want up here, and I'll have someone else invite you. Uh, yeah, Locke, you want to say something? So go ahead, and then uh, Sean, I'm sure, wants to respond. So Locke, uh, you were first. Go ahead. Um. So I feel like you, it's not a heaven or hell issue, right? And so I really love this proverb that says, um, it's an honor to be aloof from strife. And I'm that's like the season I'm in. So I will say, um, I don't know if we're reading the same thing, but because it's not a heaven or hell issue, I don't really care to fight for my point. So I'm just going to digress because I'm just okay with digressing right now. What verse is that, that proverb? I like that. Um, let me get it. Yeah, it says it's an honor to to yeah, keep yeah, just yourself for us, aloof from strife. Is there a chapter and verse with that? Yes, hold on, I'm getting it for you. Proverbs, oh. <laughs> sorry, it's right here. Proverbs 23. Proverbs 23. It is to one's honor to avoid strife but every fool is quick to quarrel. And then it continues on, but that was the first sentence I was referring to. I like that. Uh, Sean, you wanna respond? Uh, yes, and I'm not gonna use a contention, I'm just gonna use scripture. Uh, in uh, Acts 4.31, uh, I'm sorry, Acts 4.29 and 30, the church is having prayer after Peter and John had been arrested by the Sanhedrin, and so they they were told not to preach anymore in the name of Jesus. So they took it to the church, and the church prayed. And listen to this prayer. And now, Lord, behold their threatenings, and grant unto thy servants that with all boldness that they may speak thy word by stretching forth thine hand to heal, and that signs and wonders may be done in the name of thy holy child Jesus. No, you hear the prayer? God grants the prayer. God does answer the prayer. Uh, Sean, I, I think we've heard that's really hard. Like I know you have it sounds like a clicker on. I imagine you're at a turn stop and I hear like a TV or a radio on. But um, are you 
so like from what I heard that you read, it said that these, whatever you said, signs and wonders may be done in the name of Jesus. Like even Chris would agree to that. Like if, you know, someone prays and, you know, there was a sign or wonder of someone being miraculously healed, it will be like, yeah, that was done in the name of Jesus. Um, it doesn't mean that individual who, you know, prayed and, you know, uh, God healed this person um, could go, you know, part the Nile or the Red Sea or go, you know, heal everyone in a hospital. Um, I think that, and, and I know you wouldn't say that either, Sean. So, I mean, the, the discrepancy why somewhere in, you know, signs and wonders done in the name of Jesus, obviously you believe that. Even Chris, the cessationist, believes that. So the, the where exactly is the discrepancy? It's somewhere in the middle. Um, and, and so would it be on the person with the gift? Um, and, and if so, I, I know Sean, would, you wouldn't say, well, that person has a gift that they could do that every single time they pray, because obviously it, it, it doesn't happen every time they pray. Um, but you'd say that that would be like they're gifting that like more times than not it happens. Like, w would you say that? Or uh, just trying to find the middle ground. Because everyone would say, yeah, signs and wonders in the name of Jesus, sure. All right. Uh, the, uh, the 1599 Geneva Bible says God has ordained in the church. Uh, 1 Corinthians 4, 28 in the... So the, it's the, we might use the term sign gift, but sign gift, it just says gift. And and so when we use the term gifts, we don't need to add to anything. The apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers, and every believer has at least one. Because according to the scripture, 1 Corinthians um, 12, 11 says the Holy Spirit is the one who gives the gifts. Thank yet you. We, yet, we, yet we say, but we also see in 1 Timothy 1.18 for that Paul tells Timothy not to neglect the gift that was in him, placed in him by the laying on the hands of the presbytery. Then over in 2 Timothy 1.7 he says stir up the gift that was that was put in you. So it's, it's not the, it's how the Holy Spirit uses you and whatever gifting he has put in you. It's not that we control the gift, we don't do it at will, but we have to stir it up through prayer. So that's what's going on there. Okay, Thank and I know you. Rebecca, I, and I, I know Rebecca wants to, thanks Sean, uh, I know Rebecca wanted to say something too, but that, while you were, that made me think about spiritual gifts, because you know sometimes people have a bad habit of like, I don't, I guess being well-intentioned, but doing what the, taking what the Bible says and doing something weird with it. So it's like, if you've been to churches like I have, where it's like, you know, they get new people and kind of like tell them about the church and like, they'll have like a, a dinner or something for them be like, welcome new people. And it's like, all right, you need to get plugged into small groups. Ah, oh, Rebecca is just about to let her talk. She said she wanted to say something. Uh, maybe she'll be back anyway. But it's like, they'll, they'll do like a, like, you need to get into small groups and you need blah, blah, blah. And here's your Bible. And here, here's a spiritual gift checklist. Like, you know, check it's basically a personality quiz and it's like to find your spiritual gift and it's like you know everyone tries to like pick like what they hope they get like oh i i could do music or i can i could do this and and it's like the the people like who can't quite figure it out um and no one knows what to do with them by the end they're like oh you must have the gift of hospitality go like direct people to park in the parking lot <laughs> it just made me think of that uh but locked to, oh rebecca you're back go ahead rebecca. yeah you, yeah i'll go after rebecca, rebecca. Yeah, Rebecca, what's up? Yeah, sorry, I must have disconnected by accident. I don't know what happened. Um, yeah. Yeah, so ordained. when I respect that Locke said that she didn't want to continue the conversation anymore um, and that it isn't that big of an issue, well, in reality, when somebody claims to speak on behalf of God, so you hear these words all the time like, oh, the Lord taught me to tell you, or I have a word from the Lord today, it's actually a very dangerous accusation to make. Um, when you claim to, that God has spoke out your mouth and you're attributing things to God that does not belong to him, it's then blasphemy. So I will echo that it's very, very dangerous and it's very, very serious. And even in your own time, um, study it, take a look at it, read the scriptures on it, because if people are claiming to speak on behalf of God and they're not, it is blasphemy. Um, I have a question for Apostle, if that is just a name that you've only chosen to have or you actually are a self-proclaimed Apostle, have you seen the resurrected Christ? 
Wait, uh, hold well, on, because I was wait, supposed hey, to speak oh, yeah. after her. <laughs> yeah. She just yeah, spoke yeah, directly yeah. to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I get you. I get you. So, so we get the cue. Uh, yeah, so, uh, you know, Sean, you know that question's coming for you, so you can prepare an answer. Yeah, Locked, we'll get to you. Uh, and I, I just wanted to, like, you know, try to middle of the road thing real quick. And, um, yeah, so I, I agree with that. If someone says, hey, I have a word from God that God Almighty wants me to tell you, um, on one, yes, for that person, if they're speaking out of turn, and you know that is very serious and very bad. Also, it can be incredibly harmful if you're not, if the person they're trying to speak to is not like grounded in their faith and really knows the Bible, um, and they so, just see sorry, this. Nate. Oh. Sorry, Nate, just to cut you off. Um, I didn't. I, I don't only just mean when people claim to speak on behalf of God. When somebody. Uh, claims to speak in a tongue or a prophecy and they claim a new revelation because tongues and prophecy will always be new revelation yeah, yeah, and yeah. the bible says they're likened to each other you are still claiming god is speaking new revelation out your mouth it's very very dangerous sorry Nate, to cut you off well yeah so my original point is is still fine for that um explanation so but the point is yeah i mean anytime someone is doing that and looks to someone as like a spiritual authority um, maybe they're a new believer or not grown in their faith, and they start taking whatever this person says or claims um, as true. If it's not, then it can be very bad. I'm like, derail this person's faith or send them in a tailspin. So that's very bad, which, again, is a call to discipleship and why it is so important for the Christian to be grounded in their faith and know what they believe and why they believe it and primarily base it in Jesus and the Bible. Um, so it's like the Bereans, right? So they can test the scripture daily and make sure what they were being told was true and lined up. So as long as people do that. So, for example, if someone, you know, because I kind of grew up in that world. So um, it, no one directly tried really to tell that to me, but I, I, I'm familiar with that thing. So it's like whenever people would be like, I have a word from God that they wanted to tell. Like if someone told me that, I probably wouldn't call them a, a demon heretic. Um, I mean, depending how much time they have. Um, but I would be like, OK, thank you. I hear you. Right. And it's kind of like Paul where he says, test everything, hold on to what's good, get rid of the bad. I'd be like, OK, well, I'm going to be nice. I'm going to be polite, but I'm basically going to disregard everything they said. And if I think they're well intentioned and just misguided, I'll just consider that, you know, maybe some gentle correction if it's appropriate. Um, if they're trying to like, you know, like ill intent or some sort of like cash app scam, then it may be a little more forceful. But, yeah, I think I think if someone is grounded and rooted in their faith, then they can like just hold, you know hold on to i guess the good intent like have a nice day my son and also a bunch of stuff they're saying is prophecy from god be like well i'm gonna drop that like a rock but uh locked uh yes yeah, since your your name was invoked um and then we'll go to sean to answer and chris can i make you a, a mod so you can invite uh random i keep trying and it doesn't work so if you could send random sure. invite. <laughs> uh, yeah <laughs> i, I, I know this... drunk with power was that the response you were looking <laughs> uh, locked, for go ahead <laughs> um so uh definitely don't i don't think it's cool to like bear false witness so like i never said i was speaking from the mouth of god when i was talking number one i have no idea how that got thrown on me so let me repeat what i, I actually in general but she told me, but then she directed that to me and said, so check it out on my own time. So that's when it was as if that's what I was implying. But I remember saying, um, use the Holy Spirit within you will bear witness to you to confirm or deny the legitimacy of the spirit somebody is operating in. For the Bible says, test the spirit by the spirit. That is not the same thing as saying whatever she said. So don't falsely accuse me, number one. Um, number two, I have scriptures about prophets, right? Because what, what I know is dangerous, what's dangerous is to take scripture out of context. What's dangerous is to isolate one scripture and act like it's not scriptures before and after that, that give the full accurate understanding. That is what's dangerous, right? And I think it's scary when people do that on a public platform because then it misleads people for the overall accuracy of the text. So it says, surely the Lord God will do nothing, but he revealeth his secret 
unto his servants, the prophets. That's Amos 3, 7. 2 Peter 1, 21 says, For prophecy never had its origin in the human will. So that's obviously saying it's not the will of the human that provides the origin of prophecy. But prophets through humans spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit, which supports what I said. It's the Holy Spirit that is carrying the gift. It's not their will. So we don't need to keep talking about people using gifts at will. I don't know where that came from. Then Hosea 12, 10 says, I have also spoken by the prophets. So obviously God speaks by people who are prophets and have multiple multiplied visions. So obviously he's still giving visions to people who are prophets. I have given symbols through the witness of the prophets. And then lastly, Ephesians 4, 11, God hath set prophets in the church. So I don't understand why is there a scripture saying there's prophets he set in the church and that he speaks by prophets and he gives visions to prophets. He's going on and on and on and on and on about how he talks to people by the Holy Spirit who are prophets for you to then say that it's dangerous for someone to prophesy. If you don't trust the Holy Spirit in you to let you know that someone is operating in divination or familiar spirit or a spirit that is unholy, then that is something that you have to build yourself up with in consecration to be more confident that you can discern. That doesn't mean that you shut everybody up and don't prophesy, but that doesn't mean that. That means you just need to know how to navigate between false prophets and real ones. And if you can't do that, that's not anyone else's problem. That doesn't mean you disqualify and say prophets don't exist or can't operate. That means that your discernment needs to be sharper. If you got discernment, it doesn't matter if it's false prophets or not. That doesn't mean you're going to be deceived by them. You just navigate and, them. And uh, Chris, can you also send... Oh, Nick's up here now. Um, yeah, and so I, I think, again, like the the trouble um, just, just lies in how people view it, right? So, uh, I mean, I'm fine with what you said locked but also that doesn't mean like you know what? if someone is really? a well, hold on i'm trying to explain um where i'm going chris hold on put your knife down um but i'm fine with what you said in that um so maybe not but in that when you say uh false prophets like if someone is is giving something that they perceive as a false prophet it doesn't mean there's some like weird divination going on i mean i mean it could i guess but I mean, it, it could very well mean they are just in their own head, in their own power, like in their own humanity, not anything to do with spiritual. So I not totally like, agree. What, 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 right. So, so not godly prophet. And it, if it's not a godly, pro godly prophecy, it must be evil. I mean, or an evil but spirit. But the Bible I mean, does human. mention but what I was what, what, hey, I, uh, Right. But what I was trying to say is if it, it lies in where someone says, what is prophecy? So if you're someone who considers like a prophecy, um, that would be me. If someone says, Hey, what do you mean by prophet and prophecy for the people of which there are who say, well, if you say you're a prophet or you have a prophecy or something, then that means it, it is the authority of God that's giving you that. And it has to be written as Canon, which would mean you would have to add that to the Bible. And since that can't happen because we have a closed Canon, then Wait, back up, it, back well, up. hold on. Um, okay. What, where were you lost? Uh, it was from okay, when, you, just, said, from when you said that that is canon. Wait, what? Can you repeat that? Like the Bible, right? Like don't add to or take away from the from the Bible from the Scripture, or else you know, like judgment will be added or blessings will be withheld. That so like that. Generally, we think we don't need more Bible, right? So everyone's good with the Bible we have. So the, the definitions people use of prophecy is on one extreme, or, or you know, I, I think kind of right under this definition. But one person will say prophecy means. Um, it is scripture, it is divinely inspired, is given to you on such a high authoritative level that if that is true, and if there was a prophet doing prophecy like that today, then you would need to write it down and add it to the Bible. And they would; those people who give that definition would also say, and since that can't happen because we have all the scripture we need, therefore prophecy and that type of prophet cannot exist. And then you have that the other side. That makes no sense. Well, well, hold on. I'm not trying to make sense. I'm trying to get through. Wait, wait. This, I, I'm not trying. Hold, hold on. <laughs> I, I, we would be done by now if I didn't keep getting cut off. I'm not trying to make sense. I'm not trying to be a teacher right now. I'm just trying to say, like, these are definitions people use. So I'm, I'm just trying to put it on the table so everyone can understand, hopefully, where everyone else is coming from. So then if someone else says, hey, this is a prophecy, and it's totally not, like, on scripture level. We don't need to write this down. It's just like a word for this specific per person. Like I prophesy, like, you know, you, you have a bright future, like, you know, turn that frown upside down. Like, you know, good things are coming your way. I think you're going to have a good career path or I don't know, just something kind of positive and upbeat and uplifting. You'd say, oh, well, that's a prophecy. 
And then other people may say, no, that's just a word of knowledge. Or other people would say, no, don't be weird about it. Just say, hey, I felt impressed to share this with you. I think you have, you know, I, I just feel good things about you. I don't know. That's all I was trying to say. I, I mean, I know I jumbled it up, but I mean, I think if I did keep getting cut off, to be sure. But that's all I'm saying. Yeah, I'm sorry. My bad. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't mean to uh, well, keep um, cutting you off. I was just, I'm confused by definitions that aren't scripture. I just like, I, I never understand them and I don't understand well, how they're valid. I don't get it. Well, that's the thing because everyone, like, that's the thing that drives me crazy in, in these debates, not just you, but like for 14 years, I've been doing this, 13 years. And and whenever it's like these secondary issues, like free will, like, it's like you have a Calvinist who's like, oh, well, if you don't want to take the Bible uh, seriously or what it says, and then the Armenian's like, what are you talking about? And then vice versa, and it flips around. So like, Whenever someone of one side on these secondary issues starts saying, well, you know, I just read the Bible and do what it says. Yeah, it, every believer in Christ is saying that, right? So, like, the, unless you, you want to call them a liar, like, obviously, they're being truthful in their approach. They just have very different ways to get to their interpretation. So it's like, hey, uh, you know, let me prove how everything is predestined to you right now. And it's like, what, are you going to use the same scriptures I've heard for 30 years? And it's like, no, if someone wants to prove we have free will, it's like, oh, what's about to happen? You're going to use the same scriptures everyone's known for 30 years? So obviously, you know, everyone is taking them at their word. Everyone in this debate kind of is being honest, I believe. Um, it's just everyone legitimately has different ways that they get to their conclusions. And it's not that one is trying to use less of the Bible. Like everyone is using the Bible for their entire basis. That was that was kind of my thing. But Sean... Um, you were asked why you call yourself apostle. I, I know this because we've talked talked to you about it many times. But uh, for the new new person, yes, why do you call yourself an apostle? Have you seen the resurrected Christ? I believe was the specific question to you. Oh, good. I didn't hear that portion of the question. Uh, have I seen a vision? Uh, I was in my home. Uh, it was it was night. Uh, I was watching a watching Christian television on a on, on on my computer actually and all of a sudden sorry to stop you sean it wasn't have you seen no don't stop me please because i i want i want to the resurrected christ it wasn't I, a vision I, 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 can, can, well let's, can let's I? hear what he let's hear what he has to say I, and then well, well let's please, hear what he has uh, to say and then respond uh, all right now number one Remember what i said earlier about like <laughs> no one wants to talk and then everyone wants to talk <laughs> go ahead sean yeah because yeah. <laughs> i don't interrupt anyone <laughs> I'm not trying to interrupt vision anyone. Of Christ. Uh, all right. I had a vision of Christ. Uh, I was in my home. Uh, I was, I was uh, watching Christian television. All of a sudden, I was transported to Mount Gibor, which, if you don't know, that is the Mount of Transfiguration, and I saw him coming down to me. Uh, I remember like, it's, oh boy, I'm gonna have tears coming out of my eyes, what you doing? But it was just like it was, says in the scripture. I couldn't look at his face because it was shining so bright, uh, but I knew who it was. And he lifted me in my, and, and his arms like a little baby. And, I, and that's when I began to weep. Lord, I love you, Lord. And then I talked to some other ministers about what what, what what happened with me. They said, oh, let's give him a second to see if he takes the call or ends the call. He got a call, we'll give him a second. Uh, to be clear, when I said we've asked uh, Sean about that many times and heard his explanation, I have never before in my life heard this. I think usually usually he says he's like an evangelist and says of churches. Uh, so like meaning apostle as in sent or messenger. So um, we're hearing this for the first time. I get, go to someone else. I got to deal with something with my wife. She's that's going on with the truck. So I got. I'll okay. be right back. Let us know when you're back. Um, I mean, I'm looking at the chat, and everybody feels like they want to know what I think about prophecy, blah blah blah. But it's like I don't even think Nate, you wanted to talk about this from what you said. So it's like, yeah, I can sit here and elaborate on what I feel, but at the same time, it's always going to be a referee going on because we have emotions to manage. So that it's not about an inadequate response. I just don't want to dominate the stage or go against the course of the structure that um, Nate wants to do for the room. So I'm just trying oh, to no, I think it's, that. I think it's, I think it's good. Well, I mean, I think it's fine to talk about it. I just don't want, I, you know, I'm not a fan of like all the, all the backbiting because everyone no, for does sure. that. So I respect it. No, no, it's fine. Yeah, no, yeah, not you. But like, you know, when, when like little catty comments, not necessarily 
you, but all of us, right? Like, yeah. like they're like, it'll be like, hey, and you know, so I'm going to read this Bible scripture and then, uh, you know, like snide <laughs> little comment. It's like, well, well, that was unnecessary. So like, if we could, you know, if we could approach this in some, if we can have wow. a discussion, like we're actually a bunch of Christians who are in in control of ourselves, that would be great. Like, no, yeah, but that's why I said it. I digress. No, but that's the reason oh, okay. why I said I digress, because I'm like you, as soon as it's not a heaven or hell issue, yes, I have what I want to say. But I don't care enough to go through an irritating conversation for something that has nothing to do with having to hell. I just don't. I would rather give up than to keep well, pushing forward with it. I don't care that I much. I don't think everything that's a salvation issue is just the only thing that's important. Like, there are other things that are very important. Like, if I come to someone and I tell them I have a word from God, and I tell them this is what God's telling me to tell you, that's a very important thing. They can really mislead somebody if they think that word's from God. So that's the reason... What is the difference? Because you quoted Old Testament prophets. When Old Testament prophets came with a word from God. No, I didn't. You, you did. You said he, you said he, you quoted people like Hosea and you said men of old were moved by the spirit. So you quoted like the Old Testament version of prophecy. And when those men came to you, they came with a word directly from God. And to disobey that was to disobey God. So that's why Nate made the distinction between what some people say about Old Testament prophecy where you have a direct word from God on the same authority of scripture versus what some New Testament people say, where I feel like God is telling me, you know, do this or do that, where it's not directly authoritative. It's not exactly a word from God. It's kind of like an impression or something like that. But that, that's why they wanted to get your definition because prophecy in the Old Testament, you would agree when those prophets came to disobey that is to disobey God. Sure, so I Testament, agree with that. So what is the difference between that and the prophecy you're talking about? Sure. Um, I understand the importance of it. I'm not trying to downplay or minimize um, the importance of it being accurate and somebody taking um, prophecy seriously. But I do know the body of Christ is not like there's a huge division on this. And there are some people who just believe it, you can't do it anymore. So it's like, it doesn't matter what New Testament scripture you present because it's always going to be said, so you're saying you talk directly to God. And it's just like, do you not have a relationship with God? Has God never, like, I think it comes down to what makes you like Christ. The new, and it's not New Testament people for one. We're not supposed to be divided by testaments. This is when I get irritated because it's like, you're supposed to be fully in covenant with the New Testament covenant at this point, number one. So unless you're a Hebrew Israelite, it should not be Old Testament versus New Testament. You were supposed to have taken them both and agreed to understand and believe both. You're not supposed to be putting the Old Testament at hierarchy over the New Testament and basically saying the Old Testament is more qualifying than the New Testament. That's literally antichrist. Like, you can't do that. You have to respect them like, both. no people. one's doing that. No, no, no Locked, one's you're burning that. down a straw man. Okay, no but hold on. That. Okay, that's okay. That's according to... See, this is why I wanted to digress. It's like, why every time I'm talking, everyone's coming at me and cutting me off, but then when you guys are talking, I'm listening. I don't well, get I ask it. you a direct like, question. What's the problem? I ask you a direct question about and I'm the answer difference. and I'm answering it. Well, no, I'm, I'm not throwing I'm out the, the old or the New Testament. I'm just saying Old Testament prophecy was a specific thing. What is New Testament prophecy? What is and it? And I said, and I said, I agree with that, but I was answering it. But I feel like no one else on this stage is being like three to one like me. Like I don't get that. Why is that happening? Y'all not doing that to Rebecca. You're not doing it to Sean. Why are you doing it to me? Is it because I don't agree? What is it? I think that's important to answer. I, th I think locked. So I think because what happens is I, I think that there's a lot of misunderstanding going on and people are attempting to correct because you, you were you were literally saying that people are putting the Old Testament above the New Testament and no one was saying that. And I think people were trying to correct that idea. And I think that I think that there's a lot of I think you're misunderstanding the conversation a lot. And that's not a dig on you. I, I just, I don't understand where some of these conclusions that you're drawing. I think that's why people are interrupting you. So you wanted an answer. I think that's why people are interrupting you because I think that you are keep drawing incorrect conclusions about the things that people are saying. And they're like, wait, that's not what I said. And they're trying to correct that. And so I think instead of spending six or seven minutes on having to correct misunderstandings, people are trying to nip it in the bud. I think that's what's happening. 
And, all right. Yeah, so all I, right. Was I, 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 I was reading the chat. I was reading the chat, just so we're clear. Second lock. Go second lock. Go. See, here um, we are again. Well, okay. No, I, I'm well, just I letting people, I was, I, I was asked to let people know when I'm back. That's all I'm doing. Yeah, okay, we'll, we'll get to you right after this, Sean. Yeah, I knew he was, I, I knew you were just letting us know you were back. So, yeah, we'll, we'll wrap this up and get to you. And, yeah, I mean, I was about to say that, too. And I think the reason is, you know, th this is really how we show our love. <laughs> But uh, because, you know, we haven't talked to you that much. And like, you know, Nick, like I was, a, I was, I mean, I, I wanted to interrupt, but I was trying to wait until you were done. But I mean, that was going to be the first thing I said uh, was, you know, I know Nick is not putting the Old Testament above New Testament just because like, you know, me, Chris, uh, Random, Nick, Sean, even like we all know each other very, very well. Um, so you and Rebecca, uh, actually, we, we don't know that well. We're just starting to really talk to uh, for the first time. So that that may be why. So if, if you feel extra grilled, um, you know, we collectively apologize. And by we, I mean those devils, um, <laughs> but I guess for my part too. But, but the, I, I think that is also why. So what Chris said, and because you're just new and, you know, give us long enough. And, and I'm sure we'll do this to Rebecca, but, you know, she, I mean, seems like she's very reformed. And so are Chris and Nick. So, uh, you know, they're kind of like natural allies already until they find like one little difference somewhere down the road and then they'll fight too. Um, <laughs> doesn't make me a prophet i just know that's how it goes <laughs> but uh, okay yeah so locked uh, please continue take all the time you need and after you're done with that um we'll hear the rest of uh, sean what he was saying okay so i was responding to the um to the chat so i wasn't like just making up stuff i'm reading the chat and i see what people are saying and asking and so i was trying to respond to that out loud so i was speaking more to them to those on stage and if you want to know what i mean in the chat just go look in it there was a lot of them saying stuff to me so that that's to explain where that was coming from so it wasn't really about everybody on stage as far as like new testament scriptural evidence to support what i'm saying you have mark 16 and this is what i was getting at when i was like so what makes you like christ when you're like so what is prophecy now we can go by definition right because i don't know if this is literal semantics or my understanding I can, I'm in front of my computer. I can easily Google for you guys the definition of prophecy, but we all have a phone and we can all do that. But if, if you want to know my understanding and what I've experienced prophecy to be, first off, prophecy has to do with typically when a prophet, just if we just go off scripture and you just study what the prophets did in their behavior, how they were used, they typically were coming to relay a message to, and, and typically it confirmed what God felt about a thing about what was already going on. It may have been a new revelation because maybe it was never said out loud, but it wasn't necessarily so new to where it was like, whoa, this is out of nowhere, right? So if we reference the Old Testament, what prophets were doing, and then especially the definition about, oh, if it's a blessing and you have a bright future, that's a prophecy or, or something along those lines. Prophecy has nothing to do with making you feel good. It has nothing to do with it being positive at all. It literally has to do with whatever the Lord is saying to you. And when we look at the Old Testament, right, since that's where we see, I guess, most of the prophets operating, when they were sent somewhere, it was typically before judgment. They was not, it wasn't a bunch of you're going to have a bright feet, all this other stuff. That's why I mentioned false prophets. If you look at Jeremiah and the description of what God had him to do, that tells you what a prophet does is to pluck up, uproot, tear down, overthrow, build and plant. So prophets typically are coming to pluck up and uproot the root of a thing, to deal with an issue, and then to rebuild and plant according to the word of God. We see this several times in the Old Testament where when a prophet was sent, they, they came before destruction to give a warning. And they typically came to say what should have already been understood. Hey, you guys are in idolatry. Stop it. You know the Lord is a jealous God. Hey, you guys are in sexual immorality. Stop it. You know the Lord expects you to be consecrated and sanctified. Hey, you guys, you don't see a bunch of times in the Old Testament where the prophets came and even prophesied quote unquote positive things. So that's what I'm saying. Like if you're reading your Bible, and this is what I'm talking about discernment. If every time a prophet comes to you is to tell you what you want to hear and make you feel good, it's probably a false prophet. Number two, if somebody says they have a word from the Lord, first of all, they should be asking you 
or have some type of rapport with you or asking you, if you look at the prophets in the Old Testament, most of them had a rapport with the people they prophesied to. It wasn't always strangers. Sometimes it was the city they lived in. Sometimes it was a government that they were under. Yeah, we see sometimes where it was a strange land, but it was a lot of times, like Samuel or et cetera, they, they knew of them people. They were amongst them. They lived in the same city or nation as them. And they came to them and confirmed what was happening in the land and basically told them what was to come. But it was based off of what they already knew about the Lord. That's part of how they was able to tell that they were a true prophet. It wasn't this random revelation of their feelings. And why am I emphasizing feelings? You don't see any time in the scriptures where a prophet said anything where they cared about how anybody felt. Show me a time where the prophet stuck around and was like, so what do you feel about what I said? So you did you guys like that? Hey, do you agree with me? No. They pulled up, thus saith the Lord. They said verbatim the exact thing the Lord told them to say, and then they left. They did not That's stick around and even have a conversation with them to get into feelings and opinions. So if you have that understanding and you actually study the behavior of a prophet, it should be easy for you to identify when the Lord sends you one because it's probably going to confirm what you know. If you're in sin and you're and you're backsliding and somebody says, hey, I have, the, I have a word of the Lord for you. Is it okay if I share it with you? First of all, they have to get your consent because you have the, the right to The prophets never got prophecy. people's consent. The prophets I didn't say, I didn't say that. So, I didn't say well, that. Well, God well, it. Well, hang on. Uh, but, well, I well, I went, I, I well, hang on. I, I, I just I, I went, hold. really quick, Nate. It'll be two seconds. Locke, I think the reason you keep getting interrupted also is because you're going on for a very long time. You're making six or seven points. Because I'm addressing three, four different one. people. Hey, I, I know. And no, so what not. I'm trying to no, say. All right. Never. All right. You're not addressing it. anything that anybody has said. And I think that, I think, again, I'm just trying to help you out. Like, I think that the reason you're getting interrupted is because you, you're going on about things that no one has talked about and and for a long time. And so I think that maybe answering the question, when you when we ask you, what is prophecy? We're looking for like a one sentence answer, um, not a six minute answer. And so like that's I think that's mainly the problem that you're experiencing right now. Um, and I'm just Wait. trying to I'm just trying to help you to to be a little more aware of of what's going on. So basically, well, yeah, let's, let me let's... get this straight. Y'all don't understand. So you're basically telling me you don't understand. No point I'm making. I'm making no sense at all. Wait, but I can, I can understand what, I what you're saying. That, yeah, I, I don't think you're understanding what, understand what we're <laughs> saying here. No, I, I I mean I did say take all the time you needed, but man, that that was a while. Uh, but I mean, also, you, you know, you keep saying you're addressing people in chat, um, and I, I, most of us aren't reading chat. Like, I can't read chat right now. I'm doing other stuff. So, like, uh, I get the points you're making that are pertinent to us, but the stuff you're talking about to the people in chat, like, no one knows because I, I can't read it right now. So that may be the problem too. Like, you, you know, a lot of people usually like address chatters in chat. Um, sometimes we bring it here, but anyways, let, let's get back to Sean since he is available. If he's still available, and are you there, Sean? Yes, I'm here. Uh, we about to pull out for this excuse to kick it. Uh, number one, there is a difference between the wait your vision. The, you're on your vision. Why you're calling? Okay, yeah, but I just want I just want to just give give a little quick one, and I get right back to that. All right, this to let's define the gift of prophecy according to the scripture, and it says First uh, Corinthians fourteen three. He that prophesies speaks unto men to edification and ex exhortation and comfort. That is the simple gift of prophecy. The person who is a prophet, that in the fivefold ministry, Ephesians 4 11, there is a difference between that because not all prophets prophesy, but everyone who prophesies is not a prophet. All right, back to your vision. Uh, I, I, well, the, as I was stating, I began to weep in his arms, and I went to a, I went to a bunch of ministers who, who do understand what went what, on. They told me, and all three of them said the same thing, and these were in three different separate states. 
that the Lord was affirming the gift of apostleship. All right. All right. So I know, because I'm a stickler for um, Second Chronicles 2020, believe his prophets and you shall prophesy. I mean, uh, prophet. Uh, but also, uh, finally, people do not understand levels of apostleship, and I, and I keep hearing, I keep seeing. The first apostle we read about in the New Testament wise is Jesus Christ himself, Hebrews 3 1. Then there are the 12 that he chose, which includes Judas Iscariot, and we know Matthias became when Jesus uh, killed himself and betrayed Christ and all that. He, he lost his bishopric. All right. So the next thing we know is that Matthias takes his place, and we see this in Acts 6 and Acts 15. All right. Finally, there are those who wrote the New Testament. They will be considered apostles, apostles, and, and nobody say no, no current apostle in the right mind I'm gonna say that they are in uh, same on the same level as the twelve or those writers of the New Testament or Jesus Christ. <laughs> Jesus Christ himself being the top one. And I ain't gonna try to knock Christ off the throne because I don't want to get had no whooping and I don't want to go to hell. And finally, I don't want to go to Lake Fire either. And, all right. All right. And then, the fourth, and, and, and then this one thing the gift of apostleship that is written about in Ephesians 4 is talking about those who we call them missionaries today. All right. We got we got real people called the missionaries from the Latin term missio means mean the same word mean the same thing as apostolos sent one. That's all. That's what apostle means sent one for sent for specific work. My apostleship I go to Pakistan. I got to go to Pakistan in a couple of months. Y'all pray for me. All right. Pakistan. Uh, wait, what? I thought we were wait, talking about uh, pro prophecy. Wait, hang on, hang on. Uh, well, first of all, Sean, it sounds like you've been in a turn signal light for like two hours. <laughs> Are you just there in a turn signal light? That was light? a good exaggeration. I said we're about to pull off. We haven't yet. Well, you've been there at least 20 minutes. Well, is the line really long or is traffic backed up? No, we're actually in the yard. We're in the yard. Oh, you had yard? to go get a trailer. Yes, Can I have a uh, Well, hang on. I... Because that's going to be a rat's nest. I, I want to go to Random, who's been waiting very patiently. And okay. I am prayerfully hoping he gives us a widely new topic. <laughs> Random. So are you so your request is a whole new topic? Or just hit me with a hammer. Okay, fine, the topic. Whatever. Talk about this if you want. I, I don't care. Not the censoring. Nate's, Nate's, you're Nate's you're given, a free person. Say whatever you want. Nate's given up at this point. You have no restrictions. Um, I would like well, to yes talk. Oh, yes, you do. Make sure you don't talk too long. I would like to talk about the Tower of Babel. That's a little. Okay. What What is it that we know about the Tower of Babel, maybe extra biblically? Extra biblically? I'm not sure. I mean, I, I guess, I mean, where it was originally written, I mean, before it was a Bible, it was extra biblical, but I know what you mean. So, besides the current story in the Bible today, I'm I'm not sure about outside sources. We got some prophets. Maybe they could tell us. Oh yeah, this is going to be a real peaceful oh, conversation. Oh, oh, oh. Tower of Babel is such a peaceful conversation. Can't wait. So I mean, I don't know. The, the, I think the short answer um, to probably questions you aren't asking is: Look, uh, people got all up in their heads. They decided to build a big building to show how amazing and accomplished they were. And it, this comes right after God says, go forth and multiply. And they do the exact opposite. They stay right where they are in a little group and try to build a big building to, you know, show all their splendor and might. And so, I mean, they like thumb their face directly at God after he says, go and multiply. And he confuses everyone and sends them scattering. That probably addresses absolutely nothing that you actually wanted to ask him. Am I right? That is correct, but I do appreciate what you said. <laughs> so what, what um, I, I guess we, we don't know. I, I mean, give me a minute and I could, I could Google if there's any extra sources, but 
assuming we said yes, what would be your question? Well, my question is if if there's no if there's no way to confirm extra biblically the claims, let's say for example the Tower of Babel story, how can we be assured that it existed or did it was there, or that it happened as it said it happened? Oh, I can answer that. What? Well. Extra biblically, there is no extra biblical revelation if you want to be theologically sound. So I guess you wouldn't be able to get that confirmation because that's an extra biblical revelation and that's not. Oh, respected. wait. Actually, uh, praise right. be to Google, peace be upon Gemini. Um, so, first of all, I mean, that's weird that you'd pick the Tower of Abel. You could pick the, the virgin birth or the talking donkey. I mean, you could pick anything in the Bible where the only sources you have are the Bible. But again, I would refer and say, well, before they were in the Bible, they were all independent writings. So if you have, and some of the stories you have multiple accounts for, so you have multiple independent accounts that are not the Bible. It just so happens thousands of years later, they took all the relevant stuff, added it together in one book, and then called it the Bible. But there are, uh, uh, um, um, from Sumerian legend, uh, the epic, uh, let's see, the epic of Enumakar, and the Lord of Arata tells a story where the king builds this massive um, building and seeks uh, blah, 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 tribute. But it talks about mention of God disrupting the people's language um, through the nations. Um, so, I mean, I guess in Sumerian tradition, as well as Islamic tradition, even though that came many thousands of years later, um, let's see, the Quran doesn't directly mention the Tower of Babel. But it talks uh, in Surah 28 about um, people wanting to reach a god by a tower, which uh, potentially came from that. And there's various scattered uh, legend across various cultures, um, all talking about humanity being uh, basically wanting to be one race and share a single language that tried to build a massive building to reach the heavens. And uh, God messes it all up. So, I mean, I guess there are several other extra biblical, like act actual extra biblical sources. So there you go. Does that make you think it's true? Well, I guess my follow-up question to that would be if the story existed, let's say, in simplicity using the phrase extra biblically, how do how how would one uh why would one conclude that it is necessarily uh, an aspect of the Bible as opposed to like uh, a legend adapted by the peoples that wrote these things down, like I, I want to say Moses, technically, or as tradition has it. So, so why, why, why? How can we conclude that it wasn't just kind of like a a, a legend that was kind of like pulled from another culture? Well, I guess if you have any, oh, sorry, I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll wait you in a second, Lawrence. But I mean, well, first of all, you'd have to do dating, right? So, I mean, if if it came from uh, Moses first. It's a good chance he didn't pull it from a Sumerian legend. If it came from Samaria first, um, I don't know what you do with that. I don't even, I mean, it seems the sources are vague. But I mean, if you're, if you would just say like, well, what if, what if, what if, like, obviously you're an atheist already. It's like, I don't, I don't know if you need more evidence to lead you to a lack of a belief in a God or gods. Um, but I mean, I, I, I don't know. Tower of Babel is a, a weird point to pick. Like you can do that about anything. Like if, I mean, you know, like the reason you're an atheist. Like if, if, if I don't have a reason to believe in a God or gods, why should I believe? Well, I guess you shouldn't, but I mean, I, so tower of Babel is weird, but it, it doesn't matter. It's still a fine question, but you oh, can do it with anything. Like, how do you know God, what evidence you have? God, uh, well, locked, you were going to say something locked. Go ahead. No, I did not mute. That was Nate. Oh, yes. It's, it's the oh, same thing as any historical, oh, okay. any okay, historical Nate, thing. I see what you're saying. I didn't know you was done. Well, in anything historical that we only have written evidence of, there are a lot of things historical that probably that happened that I'm sure we only have written written accounts of, and we just go by the written account. Like it's the same thing. Okay. Well, random. Are you are you an atheist? I'm asking because I've never talked to you before. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, I I am an agnostic atheist. Oh. Oh. Okay. Okay. Well then. I'm thinking you were a believer, to be honest. That's why I think I was going to say something. But then it's like, mm, I don't know. It might be a dummy mission for me. So I don't think I want to say anything. Well, it, it has to do with what scripture is. And you you don't accept that, obviously, random. But there's a bunch of things in scripture, like the creation of the world, what is man, who is God. All these things we believe because it's in God's word. God has a self-authenticating word uh, that 
that he's told us certain things, that there is no way that we can know these things had not a God revealed it. So same way with creation, same thing with who God is. God has to reveal these things. Uh, these are not things you can discover uh, with your senses. Hey, Nick, God revealed to me that your beard is too short. Yeah, it's, it's getting longer. Nick, I thought you were taking a vacation from Clubhouse. Or, or, did you get enough downtime? Uh, I'll probably get on here today, and then I'll probably get off again. I was just kind of bored this morning, honestly. <laughs> um, hey, Courtney, good morning. Oh, Clubhouse bug. Uh, Got to come back. Uh, Paul, yeah, you gotta leave and come back. Did you want to say anything about the tower? Yo, uh, yeah, I just kind of like what Nick said was right. Like any historical claim can be like underdetermined or, or, or you can give any any explanation for why you think this legend, the set and the third, blah blah blah. So random. I don't really understand your question. Like, because you can like any type of historical claim that requires empirical evidence you could explain it a hundred thousand different ways so i don't really see what your point is is that is your point that you can't have like some type of certainty without god telling you or something like that because if that's the point then most of the christians up here probably agree with that and i don't see what's what's the, what's the reason but wasn't it to change the topic random oh well i did say he could say whatever except I guess speaking too long. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, let's check in with CEO. Happy Friday, CEO. How are you doing? I am great. What have you guys been discussing? Oh. Oh, nothing. <laughs> it's been a really quiet day, actually, CEO. Well, it was kind of funny, right? Because it's like it, it's like the same thing no matter what, right? So, like, as much as we talk about, like, you know, Calvin Arminian stuff, um, we met like two people, you know, Locked and Rebecca, who we, we are just starting to get to talk to more now um, in the last several days or weeks or whatever. And um, turns out they are on different sides of the aisle on some issues. And it's the exact same discussion. So it's like Ecclesiastes, right? It's like nothing new under the sun. So no matter how much you switch out the people, like the, the talking points are exactly the same. And it's like battle for battle lines form, and but we're being all good Christians about it, right, and having good discussions. But Courtney, are you back yet? Oh, I, you? I was just gonna say one thing, Nate. You know, I think, uh, but before I came on Clubhouse, I didn't know what Calvin's and Arminians were, and I think I was much better off as a human being. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. Uh, Courtney, are you back? Did you even try to leave and fix the problem? Do you even uh, clubhouse, bro? <laughs> well, we don't hear you, Courtney. If you're able to fix it, uh, let us know. But um, yeah, you probably just need to restart. Rebecca, you've been quite. You have to. You have you to cut your anything? phone off, Courtney. Courtney, you have to cut your phone off, and then it will work. I hear you can. I, I I think there's some people you could pay some cash app to, and they can release the demons from your microphone. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to address Apostle Sean. Uh, uh, go oh, we're ahead. Going right back. Here we go. I, I, I guess uh, this is our polite locked for you. <laughs> Go ahead, Rebecca. Uh, if Sean's good, I'm good. Go for it. Are you, are you still here, Sean? Yes, I am. Uh, no, I'm glad you talked about my, my first name. <laughs> um, do, you do, you if, do you prefer it if I call uh, you a if I, No, Sean is fine. I, I was born Sean. <laughs> my, my parents named me Sean. All right. It's fine. Go ahead, Rebecca. All right, okay. Um, yeah, so I, I couldn't actually fully hear you, to be honest, because you had like a ticker going. Um, so I did pick up that, that I wouldn't like to just for me to talk for 10 minutes and then for you to talk for 10 minutes. If we could just have a, a dialogue, like nice and quickly, basically, so others get a chance to talk, that would be great if you'd want to unmute yourself and just have a dialogue quickly. Um, what I got so far was that you was watching... Um, a, a sermon or was it a Christian TV and then you had a vision of Jesus glowing and holding you like a baby, is that correct? Uh, true. Yeah, so that is your claim of you seeing the resurrected Christ that would then therefore make you an apostle. It's not only that. That was, yeah, I, I, I also said that I 
spoke with ministers from different states that I trust, you know, those who have been in leadership longer than me. And they all concluded the same thing. Um, so, it's, and plus, when I, I put in the chat what God has ordained for his church. Notice I said ordained. What God ordains for his church, man has no right to say, well, I don't think that's what that's what it is. Who are we gonna believe? God and what's written in his word or man. That's, that's always my that's always my God. <laughs> Oh, no, no, I understand that, and I always understand the skepticisms, and I and I actually deal with um, this actual topic uh, in my room on every Friday night. So I have it every Friday night. Y'all welcome to come in. We go over these things every Friday night at seven o'clock Eastern, six o'clock Central. That's kind of what Nate said when he said, uh, oh, I just believe the Bible. And like, that's kind of what you just did. Like, we're going to believe God or not. We're, we're all going to say we believe God. We're just going to interpret what he said differently. So, yeah, so and, and that's fine. And that's always fine. Uh, yeah, because so, Sean, I, and, I, I, uh, let me finish my statement, Rebecca. Just, and I know we don't become sick. But I also look at when God says the word ordained, and he says that in the 1599 Geneva Bible, and I put it in the chat. But it also can be translated as place, set, appointed. That's, we don't own the church. We are part of the church. We are all Christians. Say, Rand. <laughs> and maybe, and Michael. Yeah. But the thing about it, but the other thing, and good morning to both of them. But the one thing that I that I always look at this is when people people have skepticism, and I had skepticism. I was raised in in the Baptist church, and I'm talking about the, the traditional Baptist church, missionary Baptist church, and they had no apostles and prophets. I didn't learn about this till June of '93, and so I learned about spiritual because guess what? Nobody talked about it in the Baptist church where I grew up in. I know nothing about spiritual gifts because it wasn't talked about. So when I got saved in the in, in the Pentecostal charismatic church, literally got saved. Wonderful said, praise God. They taught me things that the Baptist church never talked about. And that made me study some more. And now I'm going through Historically, what uh, not only the Bible but history has said about the continuation of the spiritual gifts. So that's um, that's been a blessing. So thank you. Thank you for that, Sean. Now, obviously, I go by scripture alone, so personal experiences for me don't triumph scripture. Now. I'm to test all things, aren't I? So if you are an apostle sent from God, you can help me so much. So you'll have the apostolic gifts. I mean, my husband's diabetic type one. It would be absolutely great. I would fly to you today, uh, wherever you are, and get you to lay hands on my husband to miraculously heal him within a second because that's an actual healing, isn't it? Not a gradual healing, but a miraculous healing. So if it's true when you are actually an apostle, I will literally give my last penny for you to heal my husband of his sugar diabetes. Um, so I would look through the scriptures as of a criteria of an apostle, one that is taught under Christ, one that has to have seen the resurrected Christ, so you've confirmed that, that you've seen him in a vision, and also one that sat, at, slept and lived with Christ. So is there a moment of your life that you... I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, Rebecca, you broke up a little bit, because I'm in the woods, so I didn't really hear a portion of what you're saying. I've got background noise. And apostle would have. Just kidding. Just kidding. Um, I've got background noise because I've got the kids um, and my husband's outside on the phone, so I've got nowhere to escape from noise. Sorry, everyone. Um, yeah. So what I am saying is right. 
if you are a genuine apostle, you have the apostolic gifts, right? One of those gifts is miraculous healing. Not a gradual healing where somebody may get sick and then they gradually get healed. That's not the gift of healing in scripture. We know Peter's shadow falls on people, bang, they was healed, right? What I'm saying is, if I go through the criteria of scripture of what an apostle is and you reach every single mark, I would love nothing the better than to fly to you tonight from Australia, wherever you are, and you to miraculously heal my husband from sugar diabetes type 1. I will give my last penny because I watched my husband suffer terribly with this disease that he has. So when I'm going, now we all test things through the word of God. I don't think anybody would deny that here. So if I go through the criteria in scripture of what it is to be an apostle, somebody was that has walked, lived, ate and slept with the risen Christ, teached under Christ. Now you've said that and you've confirmed that you've seen the resurrected Christ in a vision. Then again, your experience doesn't triumph scripture. So let's go through the criteria. When did you walk, eat, sleep, and was taught under Christ? Like Paul, like Peter, like Matthias, like the rest of them. Wait, time, time, time. Did Barnabas walk, eat, sleep under Christ? Yes, Paul. Did yes. Junias walk, yes, sleep? Yes, Paul was taught. I said Barnabas. I said, Bar I said Barnabas. Yeah, the criteria is to be taught under Christ. Yes, that is the criteria no. in Scripture. Oh, so, so Barnabas walked walk and talked under Christ. Yeah, why wouldn't he? Yeah, why wouldn't he? Yeah, no, why wouldn't he? Sorry, I can't hear you. Yeah, Bar Barnabas, Barnabas, Barnabas wasn't an apostle. He was just sent. According to the scripture, he is. Why, did, yeah. why does the scripture call him an apostle? It doesn't. It says that he's sent. It, oh. He's not He's not one of the 12, Sean. Oh, I, I explained that earlier. Well, can we just focus on Paul? Like, it seems well, like an easier one to focus on. It seems like what we have me. with, even hey, with Sean, people who say Sean, apostles. you can't just make your point how you want to. It's a dummy mission. No, it, it seems that what we have is people wanting to say certain things have continued, but then they want to make a distinction between what they actually are. Like you say apostle, but I mean apostle in a different way. Like you said prophecy, but you mean prophecy in a different way. I didn't and it's say like, I mean it in a different way. So, okay, that when I said, I don't want to get back into that, but when I said Old Testament, New Testament, you said there's a difference, but now you're saying it's not in a different way than the Old Testament. So to disobey a word from you that is a prophecy would be to disobey God. I That's, said I, that agreed, was the whole point. I said I agreed with that last statement that you just said. I guess you didn't hear that. I don't know what you heard. Yeah, so so that's the problem. You're You're saying your words carry the authority of Scripture, and we're saying... No, I never I said, said that. They would align. Not you, not I you never no, I said, Wait, I think, no, yeah, I said they would align. I think she said the opposite. I said that, exactly. Stop lying on what I said. I said they would align. Well, I mean, before we say lying, though, to, to be fair, I'm trying to split down the middle for everyone. I mean, you know, I wouldn't call Nick a liar. No, I'm not saying he's a liar. I'm not saying he's a liar. I'm just saying stop twisting. Just take what I'm saying for what I'm saying. I don't like for my words to be twisted into something else. I can stand by what I said. I'm not somebody who backpedals. I it, said it would align. That's not the same thing as saying it trumps it. I said it would align with scripture. Yeah, if you reveal something to somebody, if you're a prophet, like you gave the example, and you say you have a word from the Lord, because you're supposed to test the spirit by the spirit, they should not be revealing anything to you that goes against scripture. That's what I said. I didn't say it would trump scripture. I would never say that because I don't believe that. Okay. No, not so trump this scripture. Is, this is good. authority of scripture. Right, but, but this is good. So, like, we need to get into what are the three things for testing the spirits, but we, that's a side issue. I think the main issue, and I think that the problem that people are pushing back, Locked, is that it says that all scripture is God-breathed, right? This is the sufficiency of Scripture, 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. I, I am 100% sure you would say that you agree with that Scripture, right? I mean, I don't, yes, I don't I think do. anybody... Of course, right? So wow. the problem is, is that we have a disconnect between the Scripture and a modern-day prophet. Is the modern-day... Is the Word of God insufficient for training in righteousness, correcting, and rebuking? I, no, I, I don't mean, believe that. I don't believe okay, it's but insufficient then what, at then all. What is the purpose of a modern-day prophet if they are not, if they're 
acting and functioning in the same way that the word of God is. But wait, that's but wait. So that's the disc in my opinion. I'm not gonna speak for you. In my opinion, what you just said, at least say for me, that's my disconnect, right? And this is when and I think it went over heads, even though it was deemed to be irrelevant. But the reason why I described the behavior of a prophet was to show the purpose but nobody paid attention to that because everybody was caught up in why i wasn't talking new testament i was mentioning the behavior to point out how you would discern the purpose which is why i was saying a prophet has a track record of coming and saying something that you should have already known so for example if you're battling with addiction and i come to you and i say um i have a word of the lord and he's saying that if you need to stop your addiction because you can't come into heaven with that vice is this a new did you not know that if you have an addiction you already know right. that you need you already know that you need to stop so if i come and tell you that the lord said stop how are you going to take that like this is something new it's not but, new but you already problem, knew that the problem is that instead of saying the bible says that your addiction is bad and wrong you're saying I've gotten a private revelation from God about your addiction. That's the disconnect that we don't need. But you that. know what makes it private? Right? If I don't know you, this is when I think. I guess the private part, if that's the part you're picking at, or I guess if the private part is what would make it, I guess, appear new, it's as if that's revealed to me without you telling me. And that's what I mean by that's when the whole like, how would I know that? There's no if unless I knew you, right, and we were friends or something, it's no way I would know you were struggling with addiction if you're just a random stranger. Like say something. So if I come to you and I say that yeah. to you, then the confirmation should be the question should be, how does this person know I'm struggling with addiction that doesn't know me and it's not obvious? I'm not doing it in public. So how would they know that? It must have been God that revealed that to them because I know this is true. I am struggling with addiction. Right. But but again, do you not see the disconnect that the scripture is no longer relevant or needed that we need the supernatural knowledge from God in order to make the church holy. I don't think I would what, you know, there's also a lot of what I'm saying to one second Anthony we'll get to you I don't um okay so I'll land with this I see okay you're expressing that's the disconnect I get that right and this is when because it's not a heaven or hell issue I can digress but as far as how I look at that I look at that as disagreement not disconnect because if that has happened to me, right, my first, I don't perceive it like that. I don't take it like now scripture is irrelevant. I take it as a confirmation for scripture because if I go into scripture and look at lust, right, and, and addictions, I can find in the scripture where that's a problem. So it's, if anything, it reinforces what I already know about scripture, which is the lust of the flesh or gluttony, as opposed to making it so I would no longer need scripture. But I'm not challenging that. If that's how you take that, then that's when I would be like, you know what? It's not a heaven or hell issue. We don't see that the same way, and I'm cool with that. But that's just not how I would take that. Well, I'm uh, think... locked. I think I'm. Uh, wait, hang on. We're getting. Anthony was next, and then I guess Nick and then CEO. Um, I'll try to remember all that. But yeah, locked. I'm a little. I, I'm a little easier than Chris with what you just said. The last thing on how you, you know because the word of God is absolutely sufficient, right? So, but the scenario you brought up, I'm 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 like a little easier on that because um you know it's like well what if someone is you know never read the Bible? The Bible is sufficient. They need to crack the book open. Um, so, you know, someone has addiction, like your scenario, and it's like, you know, you feel like God is telling you to go to that person and maybe crack open a Bible and be like, hey, here's your answer. Um, so does that mean like God directly told that person? Does that mean you have God living in you and you have like, uh, you know, you just have an impression or intuition or you, you just like subconsciously like see someone and you're like, oh, man, that person is clearly addicted to drugs and you attribute that to God telling you? Um However, that comes about. I, I get what you're saying, and I'm more sympathetic to that position because you're not refuting the word of God. But on the other hand, if I felt like that, I'd be like, ah, I don't know. Maybe God directed my path. I mean, obviously, you know, Chris would get behind the God commands you to go anywhere. So if you're facing that scenario, it's because God put you there anyways. Um, so then if you're like, well, you know, 
was God telling me to come to this person or did I just feel like God was telling me or was it just my own common sense subconsciously because look at this guy, he needs Jesus. And, but I also wouldn't say, hey, buddy, uh, you know, God has a word uh, for me to give you. I'd be like, hey, buddy, uh, let's just go get you in 12 steps, right? So, I mean, the, trying to split the difference, I, I'm with Chris and I'm also sympathetic to your position because however you arrive at that, also, like someone told me, you know, there was like part of a sermon once that stuck with me. It was like, don't be weird, right? And they were telling like how they had this like little church in the middle of nowhere in like Texas. And one time there's this person that they kind of like, they were having issues with because they were kind of like wildly outside the Bible. And they, they were, I think, trying to be a prophet. Um, and they said like, you know, the pastor tried to kind of put up with it as much as they could until it just got really disruptive and really like weird and off off base, even for that stuff um so they had asked the person just to not come back because they're just like you know do outbursts in the middle of church and you know god is god of order and all the church orders and stuff like that the guy was just like very outside of lines even for people who are all into prophets and stuff um so they would they would probably say this guy is out of out of bounds anyway but one day they're like we're in the middle of service it was like a child dedication and this person like walks in they haven't been there weeks they come in like a long coat um and they just like walk down the aisle with their hands raised and start saying like, I have a prophecy from the Lord. And I'm like, oh my goodness. And anyways, this is one of the people who is into that stuff. And they're like, look guys, the point is don't be weird. It's like, if you think God is telling you to tell someone something, don't be weird. Just be and like, I agree. hey, you know, I think this Bible verse is for you. I think this could really help you. Like, you don't have to be like, thus saith the Lord. Like, that's weird, man. You've got to know that's weird. Um, so Anyways, uh, Anthony wanted to <laughs> – Anthony, Nick, and then see you. Anthony, go ahead. Yeah, I just want to say, you know, pretty much every situation I've seen where people begin to start um, receiving, you know, so-called prophecy, what I see is them being led more to people, going to people to hear from them and less away from the, from the, from, um, the, the word of God. They, they, they get a so-called prophecy and, and, and they don't get deeper in the scripture, but they want to chase that experience over and over and they start searching for that experience. That's just what I've seen. And, and sometimes you might ask, well, well, you know, how did this person, you know, know these things? But I mean, people do that every day at tarot readings and, and things like that. They say, oh, there's no way they could have known this thing. So there's, there's other forces that work. It's not always God. I don't think we could ever know any of these things for sure because there are other supernatural evil forces that, that can do this thing, especially if it's leading someone away from the word of God. So I would say that. And then lastly, I would say there's also a prince, a biblical principle of everything being being affirmed by two or more witnesses. We've had, we have that all the way through the Bible. And these aren't just any any um you know witness is always someone who's seen these supernatural um signs and wonders these are the witnesses that so so, so when paul had his experience on damascus road every, everybody else with him saw this exact same light they saw it and, and maybe they, they they didn't um interpret um the, the exact um you know words that were being said but they saw this miraculous light he was also confirmed by 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 the other apostles. He he was confirmed by Luke. He was you know affirmed. So that's another thing that anybody who's claiming to be apostles today they they do not have this whatever vision you have. It's not confirmed by two, by two or more witnesses. So we'd have no way to go back and test them by people who have actually witnessed these great signs and wonders. So for me, that's just an easy you know turn down. Uh, I may Nick. break up. Yeah, I may break up some I'm driving, but yeah, the the first example where she was talking about uh, going to someone with addiction, if that's someone you know and someone you know has addiction and you're going to that person, that's not prophecy. That's just being a Christian. I uh, said that's, a stranger. That's she didn't know about it. It was someone she didn't know. I know. I know. I'm, I'm going to deal with every I, – I, I heard what she said. I said if that's someone – I'm going through every point. If that's someone you know – then that's not prophecy, which is, I think, why she changed it to someone she doesn't know. And the reason I said, and, and the first case, if it's someone you know and, and they have an addiction, you're going and they're a Christian, uh, we're called to do that as Christians. You don't need to be a prophet to do that. The Bible commands us to do that. And on the other account, you said uh, someone I didn't know. Well, nowhere in the New Testament do you see any Christian going around correcting people they don't know, telling them, hey, I think you struggle with this sin. You know, maybe you need to repent it. That Nowhere in the New Testament will you find that anywhere 
what you do see, if this is a Christian, uh, yes, we're supposed to correct other Christians, but we never are called to go around correcting other Christians we don't know because of some dream we might have had about something they may be doing. Nowhere in the New Testament will you find that. What you find is Matthew 18, if your brother sins against you, go to him. That's the only place we're commanded to go to other Christians if they're sins. Yeah, you're breaking up. I didn't I didn't I didn't say it would be done off of a dream though. But this is the reason um, why I you, you don't even wait, 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 hang, 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 wait, wait, hang on. There was another order. Was it, it was it C, CEO? Yeah, and, and my and, 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 oh, and my, my comment will flow. <laughs> Yeah, my comment will flow into you, Lot. Hold on, I, um, I was so backing up, right? What, what, we heard, we heard, your, we heard, we heard your points. Well, um, no, I wasn't, so, I wasn't uh, done. Somebody said I was breaking up. I said but that yeah, that's all I'm you saying. were breaking up. Yeah, but you, you don't see people anywhere having an impression and going to someone based on that. If this is a lost person, we go share the gospel with them. We know they're sinners. We know they need Christ. We don't have to know specific sins. We just know they need Christ. If it's a Christian... You don't see anywhere in the New Testament where you have Christians having impressions about somebody else and going to them. There's nowhere that's commanded, nowhere that's given an example. The, even the apostles didn't do that. So, yeah, that's that's nonsense. Yeah, I mean, I uh, the scenario Locke described, I, I've seen many times. The idea is the Holy Spirit prompts you in some way. You go up to a person. You say something encouraging to them, right? I don't think it's really that deep. Um, and I, I have seen that in, in my church. And sometimes a person receiving it is a Christian. Sometimes they're not. They're a visitor. Um, so I've seen that multiple times. And I've seen the person confirm what the, this, the other person is saying to them as that person was prompted by the Holy Spirit. So I've seen that play out many times. And I don't think it's as deep and spooky as everyone is kind of framing it to be. Well, well, I, agree. I mean, I agree with you, CEO, because totally on, the most, on, on the most extreme, on the most, well, I, I think on the most extreme, you have, you know, the thus saith the Lord people, and everyone's <laughs> but like, I'm not whoa, you're, you're weird. Them. And then, no, I, I'm, I know, I'm, I, I'm getting, to, like, much like Nick, I'm just going through all the points, because I ultimately agree with CEO. Like, you've got the thus saith the Lord people, write a scripture, and then on the other side, you've got, well, you know, if you're like that, then blah, 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 you need to write a scripture, you can't do that, heretic. But then as you come closer, it gets much more reasonable, like what you were saying, CEO, and the point I tried to make is like, look, if you feel like you're like, God has told my spirit to go tell that person about Romans 1, um, and then uh, you, you know if you said that, uh, Chris and Nick would jump all over you, but what you actually do is go over and say, hey, buddy, I just want to share this Bible verse with you. Is that okay? And they say yes and you just share Romans 1, then you look at it, and Chris and Nick are like, oh, they didn't do anything wrong. That person just walked over and asked if they could read a Bible verse, and they said yes. So I, I don't know where the, the difference is. It's like, I, I guess, don't ask, don't tell. It's like, why did you read Romans 1? Because God gave well, me a prophetic difference. word. Well, there's no, a dial up. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. My, I'm, I'm saying in this, it's like, oh, why did you share Romans 1? Because God gave me a prophetic word. Whoa, red flags in their eyes. Versus, why did you share Romans 1? I just felt like it was something they needed to hear. Yeah, oh, well, that's totally normal. There's a difference in using Christian I, I, wisdom. I, 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 Christian wisdom versus saying, I have a word directly from Christian uh, wisdom tells us to go share scripture and encourage people. That, that's just scripture. That's what we do. But it's a well, difference saying, God told me directly to go do this. No, God's word tells you as Christians that's what we're supposed to be doing anyways and saying that God gave you a specific passage for this that's a completely different thing like of course all lost people or Christians or whoever need the gospel they need scripture all that but saying uh, something we do in wisdom you know I know in, in wisdom and according to scripture I'm supposed to do that I go do that and say oh, well, I'll share the gospel with them versus saying God told me directly to share this scripture right here with it. No, that you're using your brain. You're thinking. I, I, you, you you're actually using your brain to think about uh, scripture. Hey, wait, wait, we're going to yes, write to yes, you, yes. Wait, 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 we're going to write. We're going to write to you, Locks. But this is this is what I'm saying, right? And this is where I wouldn't start a holy war over it. I would be like Locks to be like, hey, I digress, or I am digressing, so I'm just going to get out because if someone's like that, I'm like, okay, well, I, I I would try to maybe do some like gentle correction or teaching. And be like, lead them to a conclusion, which I hate when people do to me, but maybe I'd try that. Um, because, you know, I, I would discern that their heart's in the right, right place. But, you know, they're like, uh, you know, God totally told me to do this or whatever. 
when maybe it was just, uh, again, like subconscious intuition or you saw someone or like something you're not even thinking of led you to do that and you're calling it God told you, um, I, I would maybe try to like gently persuade them and to be like, well, do you think this is what happened? Do you think this would be like, I certainly wouldn't like, you know, blow up a room over it, right? metaphorically speaking or something like that. But uh, locked, go ahead since we've talked about you quite a bit. <laughs> Talk about me like I'm not here. Nah, you're a good <laughs> moderator, Nate. It's all good. It's all good. It's not personal. I know we just we're sparring. But um okay, so I'll say this. Um it, it's okay, so now it's getting a little funny to me because it's like it sounds a little crazy, right? Because it's like, do you have a relationship or not? Right? So this is what tripped me out about Christians that are like, God said, do you direct? So are are you like what's happening with you in prayer? Like, be like, do you, does God not talk to, like, how are you saying that God is your father, but then you think it's ridiculous to have a conversation with him? Like, th I feel like this is when it's a lack of understanding of relationship. When you have a relationship with someone, it's a real relationship. You talk, they talk back. So God speaking to somebody has nothing to do with being a prophet. Like it's this exclusive club. If you are a believer and God is not talking to you. I wonder if you're a believer because I don't understand yeah. how See, you're right, spending. That right there. Let me finish right what I'm saying. Yeah, though. That problem. right there is horrible to me. That's hey, listen. If I would like say that, shots fired, but what? That's a downplaying like of that, God's word, saying that God's if he feels word like is that, not sufficient that's how he feels. to speak to us. God is spoken to us through His that. word. Why do you keep putting words because in Because you're saying mouth? if it's not, well, it's just biblical, going it's saying. not God speaking. You're saying if it doesn't come from outside the Bible, saying. it's not God speaking to us. I am God not saying us. what you're saying You are saying, saying that. All. Oh, I wish I would have shown this months ago. Really, Nate? It's, it's not even fair. Why are you not muting Nate? Wait, stop, 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 stop. Everyone stop or I'm going to drop you all. I hit the mute all button because both of you were talking. So it's not Nate muted someone, Nate muted everyone, and both of y'all unmuted yourselves immediately. Just calm out. Oh my goodness, people. The point is, you said if God didn't speak to you, then you got to wonder if you're even saved. The reason Chris said it's blasphemy is because it's definitely incorrect. The Bible says if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. There's absolutely nothing in Scripture that says you have to have God speak to you or you're not a Christian. Just like people that talk about like sinless perfection or say you have to be filled with the Holy Spirit with evidence of speaking in tongues to be saved. Like that is completely wrong. That's why Chris said that. That's why you said that incurred the reaction. That's the answer. Uh, let me take two seconds to divert to uh, AB if you're still here, if you haven't like set yourself on fire yet uh, from this conversation. AB, so your question in chat was, which I'm going to bring it in chat now because, oh my goodness, we can't get away from this fast enough. Chris, question, why do Christians not speak up about the Palestinian Christians that are being uh, deliberately abused uh, in Israel? Sometimes I believe Christians submit to Jews instead of Jesus. Um, I'm sure there's some that you could say that to. As for me, first of all, it's what kind of information do we have? So uh, don't believe everything you see in the news. Secondly, um, yeah, I have no allegiance to Israel or any, any Jewish hierarchy or anyone. My allegiance is to God alone, right? And if there's crummy Christians, I don't have allegiance to them either. I mean, spiritual brothers and sisters in Christ, yes. But if they're the ones behaving badly, they get called out. Uh, you know, if like Christians and atheists are, are behaving badly, and, you know, I'll call the Christian out just the same. I think sometimes I'll be harder on the Christian because, you know, they're supposed to be, um, as they will tell you, held to a higher standard. So I think that. So as far as Israel, uh, there's the religion versus the government, right? There's politics versus religion. And I think there is a lot of sketchy stuff like, you know, with Gaza, with the Christians, like, you know, Christians who like get spit on by Jewish people. And does that mean all Jews are bad? No, the Jews who are spitting on Christians in Israel um, who are trying to proselytize them, those are the bad ones. Uh, the Christians who are not just sharing the gospel, who are in their face yelling, screaming, doing all kinds of abusive behavior to the Jewish people, all Christians aren't bad. The Christians who are being crappy Christians and jerks are bad, those people. So yes, I am happy to call out bad stuff where I see it all day long. So I don't know if that answers your question. I know you asked it a couple days ago too, but yes, I think uh, Gaza, um, you know, what's happening there, depending if, if all the reports are accurate, if they are truly carpet bombing the crap out of the place, indiscriminately killing. I know there's churches that have been bombed. I know there's hospitals that have been bombed. Um, you know, I think a lot of that's 
a lot of things are split between the hospitals. You know, Hamas clearly is godless, soulless demons and uses hospitals and schools and things like that to infiltrate. So, um, you know, a lot of times you have no choice. Does that mean the Jews who bomb the people and, uh, act, you know, accidentally kill kids are bad when Hamas is using these human shields? No. Does it mean if there's legitimately a bunch of people gathered together who are innocently trying to hide and they get bombed, does that mean they're bad? Well, it doesn't mean they're good. I mean, accidents happen, but if it's intentional, like some would suggest, then that would be evil. That would be the definition of war crime. So everyone is capable of good and bad, and there's also what actual data and information people have. So um, there we go. Can everyone try to make me a promise and just keep yourselves together a little bit so I can take like a 10-minute break and I don't have to speak? And uh, Michael, yeah. we'll start with you. <laughs> What's up, it's Michael? Not... You haven't said a word. Hey, hey. Uh, happy Friday, everybody. I um... hate you. <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding. Well, you hate me what? Because it's because it's Friday, or because I'm taking another day to not work? Um, I hate you because I hate you. <laughs> okay, that's fair. Um, I think it's interesting. Hey, I think we should. I got yeah, hostile. I don't think. We, yeah, yeah. Get well, back to the basement. Well, he's American. Um, it's okay. Uh, so I think that uh, I don't think we should overlook this this falsification uh, criteria that was offered up a little bit ago. I'll go on the record right now. Um, whatever the airfare costs to get Rebecca's uh, husband to uh, Apostle, I'll chip in a grand. Uh, Nate, you send me your contact information. I will send you a thousand dollars. I'll chip in because, a grand. Yeah, I'll match um, your grand. Yeah, because like, like this would this would do a couple things. One, if what you guys are saying is actually true, I guess I'd become a Christian, and it would also heal someone of a of a terrible ailment. So. You know, the, it, I think it's interesting, and I brought this up before with other people, you know, that the, you know, that the Bible gives us um, a way to basically, you know, test the, the theory, right? The book of Matthew, you know, uh, it's in Matthew, right, where it says, anything you ask in my name, I will do so that the Father may be, glor may be glorified, I think, through the Son. And if we have someone who's a genuine apostle who has this capacity to heal someone, um, I mean, there's a few things. And I'm, I'm meeting this only a little tongue-in-cheek, only a little tongue-in-cheek. But Apostle, why don't you basically live at children's hospitals? Well, I, I, um, you know, like, and, and, and I'm, I'm being kind of serious, right? Like, if you have this genuine ability, then I think you have an obligation that goes along with, you know, like, like, uh, you know, what is it? Uh, you know, that, that line in Superman, we, right? With great power comes great responsibility. So, but no, no, anyway, yeah, uh, set it up. And uh, yeah, Rebecca, we'll get your husband taken care of. Well, I, maybe I maybe only meant I wanted to go much. on a tender break, tongue in cheek. But um, I do I, feel like it was shut down very quick after I am asked I able to finish Sean, now? For, for, Sean for a reply, and I was quiet the whole time. But Sean never had the opportunity to reply. Did he fit the criteria when I asked it? I do think it got shut down. Why quick. is it this well, favoritism no, he, he going he... on right now? What favoritism? Like. We were cut off. You said you were taking a break. Then we could finish, and now everybody else is talking but us. I don't get it. You have literally talked more or less the whole it doesn't time. Doesn't matter. We. I think all Nate's talk. just trying to balance a stage lot. I think he's just trying to. Yeah, balance maybe a stage. I'm bad at my job, but Michael. No, no, he's he's when, doing good. Uh, <laughs> when um, when, so first of all, yeah, uh, Sean did say he was confirmed because a, a, gr a group of other pastors or whoever he. Um, you know, considered authorities, the consensus was he he was legit apostle. Uh, Michael, I also don't think Sean would say he can act, like like heal 100% of the time or something like that. I don't think that was his claim. On the other hand, if you guys wanted to hear, I'm, I'm getting $2,000 that I'm supposed to distribute for airfare. I mean, I don't think Sean claimed what you think he claimed, but I'm still happy to take all your all money. Well, then um, he's no longer an apostle, is he? He doesn't fit Well, I don't know. Sean, do you want to respond and... Uh, and Detroit, Sean, it, <laughs> Detroit it, hasn't Sean, said one word. Sean can't do that. He's no longer an apostle. This is the point. He well, Sean, are the you there, here. Sean? And this is for the listeners as well, and everybody. I, I, I'm, I'm trying to answer because I was asked a question, and they like, keep talking. I agree. You wasn't. Yes, I, I agree. Uh, I think it got shut down too quick. You you wasn't able to answer. So please answer us. Uh, okay. I, now number one, I'm gonna say this in front of everyone i do not consider myself jesus christ i do not consider myself one of the 12. i'm not trying to add to the 
to the written canon is already closed. All right, I have said that thousands of times on this app alone. So when people want to say, want this type of process, that type of process, and I, I don't understand when I point out the divisions of apostleship, someone has a problem with that. I said, I'm not Jesus. Hebrews 3.1. Read, read your Bible. I said, I am not one of the twelve in the Gospels. From Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. I said that. Thirdly, I said, I do not write any New Testament scripture. But it seems like we, what the scriptures say about apostles in the Bible, it says, when he ascended, he gave gifts unto men. And then it describes what gifts he gave unto men in Ephesians 4. That's the apostleship I'm talking about. I'm not talking about one who wrote scripture. I'm not talking about one of the 12. Judas didn't write nothing. Part of us didn't write anything for Acts 14, 14. He is, he is called the apostle. It says apostles Barnabas and Paul. So we really start reading. Really, if you want to believe the scripture, believe the scriptures. Well, I think it's fair, like just to, uh, to kind of just so, you know tack tack onto it. Like I, I don't. I have mean, a what is what does like, of course that it's kind, made what up, is right? that kind of apostle? Well, yeah, yeah, that's what Nick. Fair question. So, well, let me ask Apostle, and, and you know, I'm more sympathetic to this perspective than most on the stage. But I think Rebecca asked a very direct question. She said, um, "If you're an apostle, are you able to perform the miracles?" And so, can you just speak to that directly? Because if you can't perform sure. the miracles, why does that still why does that still allow you to be an apostle? Could you just answer okay. that directly? All right. Yes. Okay. Uh, I, I'm sorry, I got. I, I'm sorry, I got. Uh, sorry, there's a call coming in to my watch, so let me go back and I'll answer in just a moment. Okay. Well, well is it my turn now? Go ahead. Yeah. We're we're all on hold for for Sean to get off his call, so go ahead and and, and Locke, uh, I want to ask you a question. Could you respond to it as part of your response? Is that okay? Yeah. Sure. Okay, so lot I, I was a little surprised that you said uh, if someone isn't having a conversation with God, then they're not Christian. Like my 11-year-old son, for instance, you know, a couple years ago became a Christian. He doesn't feel like he hears from God. I would hope that you wouldn't suggest he isn't a Christian. So um, I, I was surprised you took that strong of a stance. Yes, yeah, so, well, what I said verbatim was, it will make me wonder if you're actually a believer. Um, and that's when I got basically attacked and muted. Um, but if I was able to land that, I was getting at, and this is when I was talking about relationship. And I, I love how we're cherry picking part of what I'm saying. And this is how I can tell if context is a priority for the comprehension in here. Because without context, you're deemed to be an error when it comes to understanding something. So the context of what I'm talking about is relationship. The Bible talks about God wanting to have a relationship with you. So the question I wanted to ask, I think I got sabotaged from asking any questions. Everybody wants to ask me stuff. If you have a real relationship with somebody, do you not talk to them and they talk back? Or do you just talk to them and they say nothing? Yes. Because so every relationship, every, every, well, hold on. I want to, can I ever finish? You just ask a question. Wait, okay. I, I'm quickly running out of wits in. You j literally asked a question, and now we're trying to answer. So, do you not want us to answer the question? Or I want, I, 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 when you ask me a question with your response, don't I still have to wait till you're done, Nate? It sounded like you were ready for a response. So, everyone started. Oh, well, you're going to ask several questions? Because to say that God doesn't speak, to say that, well, God, I, I, to say that God's I, word is not God speaking to us is blasphemy. 
So so go ahead, Nick, and cut me off. It's fine. Just have my well, yeah, stuff. Yeah. It's okay. <laughs> Not, well, not, nothing nothing happening here. Nothing happening. Nick, hold not, on, not bro. Speaking to us. Nick, I'm talking I, I about can't, the dude. relationship. I can't. I can't. Like, I, I don't know what else to do. Like, stop interrupting. I mean, I know. Do I know it? I, ah, I know. I interrupt. It's my room. I'm sorry. I, I don't mean to like full rank, but that's it. Like this. This day is just nuts. Um, what I was trying to say to answer your question is, people will say. You know, like, it's like a cliche. When you pray, you talk to God. When you read the Bible, God talks to you. It's also not wrong. Um, so that's the answer. I guarantee that's the answer, like, everyone is going to give in a slightly different flavor of that. Okay, that's fine. So to what CEO said, no, I would not imply that your son doesn't have a relationship with God, right? He's young, he's growing, he's learning God. But I'm glad you brought up a child because it brings me to, um, was it Samuel? Remember when the young prophet, um, they were saying his name, and when he woke up, he, he said, yes, here I am to his father. And he said, I didn't call you. I think it happened about three times. And his father told him, go back to sleep. And the next time you hear your name say, um, yes, Lord, your servant is listening or something like that. Right? So what I'm saying is every time you pray, I mean, I don't know. Let me not say this, a blanket statement. I don't know what you guys do. Every time I pray, I don't have my Bible open and I just don't recite scripture to God. Or I don't have my Bible open and look in the scripture to talk to God. There's times when I pray to God and there's not a Bible in sight. And yes, he does respond. The Holy Spirit will respond. He could respond by a thought, He could, but he responds. So what I'm getting at is when I say, if if God doesn't speak to you, it makes me wonder if you're a believer. I'm I'm picking at the fact that to have a relationship with God is to have dialogue. It's not just about you just read a book and then you just say stuff to him and you don't say anything back. Yes. Do you understand the language of God and even um, receive revelation for him while reading the Bible? Of course. Yes, I agree that the Bible is a foundation and I don't think you can have a relationship with God apart from the Bible. But when it comes to conversation, I do not have to have my Bible to talk to God. I can pray and have a conversation with God in prayer without my bible and that is what's making me that's why i was saying the strong stance of so are you saying that a believer cannot have a conversation with god and know what he's saying to them without their bible i think you can and i think we are just misspeaking past each other so much that there's never going to be a resolution unless chris has and that's one right fine. now and that's i cool. don't think so nate so Nate, what she's getting at is that God whispers, is that it's a Second Kings 19 situation where God is not in the fire and he's not in the earthquake, but he's in the still Did small voice. This? Is that what you're getting at? How you just make all that's, of that I'm up I'm asking if me. that's what you're, hold on. I'm asking if that's what you're getting at. Are you saying that God speaks to us in a still small voice, yes or no? This is, this is where you say yes or no. See, and this is when I don't want to say yes or no because you're dictating it to me. Okay, I, um, let's move on. Sean, I, can, is Sean, wait, I, mean, I, I want to check and see if Sean's back because that's I'm really back. what we're I'm waiting back. on. This I'm back. To be like a quick I'm thing. back. And I, I'm back. Uh, Nate, yes, thanks. Right. Okay. Do you want me to restate the question, Sean, or do you remember it? I, I, I remember. I was giving okay. the, I was saying a little bit. Cause I was getting a little, cause I've said, I, I probably said it's a little so strong cause I was a little Wait, can somebody answer it. my question? I'm sorry, after you apostle, my bad. I wasn't trying to stop Okay, you. no problem. No problem, sister, no problem. There, now the fourth level of apostleship is what I was talking you? about. I'm not talking about one who, an apostle who says he's on the same authority as Christ. He's on the same no, authority as the 12. Uh, or the ones who write wrote the New Testament. What I'm talking about are the ones who we call missionaries now. The ones who we call the ones who go out into unsaved places. Give the gospel. And the Lord affirms the gospel that is preached. That's what I'm talking about. With okay. Now, I'm not talking about uh, okay. At will, heal at will. 
I, 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 and I've said that plenty of times, and I gave the scripture in Acts chapter 4, it shows they prayed for the signs and wonders. They didn't do it at will, they prayed first. Okay, but I so asked after, a valid after, question. Oh, hold on, Mox. You, man, you have talked like for more than probably me, and it's my room. Like you, you've talked a lot. I'm trying to be fair to everyone. Detroit down there still hasn't said one word, and I'm trying to work my way to it. Just, just take a beat, <laughs> and and we will come back after everyone else. But we we got to get to some other conversation. Uh, so after all of this, we get to apostle is the kind of apostle that means sent one or messenger to take the gospel, not the kind of apostle um, that. Michael wants to be able to heal everyone in the hospital. So I'm glad it took, I don't know, two hours to get to that hour and a half. But that is the kind of apostle uh, Sean has said. So Can um, we get that's what I've heard him say that? before. Um, Sorry, Nick. Hey, so can hey. we all come to the conclusion that Sean isn't actually an apostle? Apostle technically meaning sent is what he is claiming so not yeah, so apostle. Have we, yeah have we all come to the conclusion that sean is not an apostle for all the people who are listening by his own words he's not actually an apostle thank well, you wait 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 hang on rebecca i i know I, I know what you're saying and and that's fine i think sean's saying it too but i mean technically i mean you know if apostle means sent and he is like that's what i mean then he would be that apostle but in no way the apostle right, you are talking are about sent. for this discussion but like, I mean, but I think what Rebecca means is like, there's not a well, yeah. special moniker that all of us get because all of us are sent into the world to preach the gospel. And so the idea of an apostle that is sent by a church, now that may be the case where Sean has had the laying on of hands from a church to be sent out to be an evangelist or something like that. And it's using a title that is culturally, culturally significant to groups of Pentecostals, then sure, fine. But what we're saying is the biblical definition of apostle, which is one of the 12 with authority, that is not what he is claiming. Yes, that's what I was getting at. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Detroit, would you like to say something? That's been a long time, man. How are you? I'm doing pretty good. I'm in, I'm recovering, brother Nate. Shouts out to you, man. Chris and everyone else up in here, man. CEO, Apostle Anthony, uh, Locke, Michael, Rebecca, Nick, what's up, man? I rock with you guys. A lot of good things going forth, man. Hey, uh, I kind of forgot what it was that I was going to ask Apostle Sean, but he cleared it up for me, I believe. Yeah, yeah, he did. He says, he did, you know, basically what I'm getting from what he's saying is that he's not of the original 12 in which he hasn't been... Uh, I guess, given that gift of miraculous signs, miracles, and wonders, you know, if that was the case, then I needed you on here last week, Sean, for real, when I fell ill and had to have my appendix removed, man, he had to do an emergency surgery on me right away. I was in a lot of pain. You didn't have to come to Detroit, Michigan to heal me. You could have just did it over the phone like the apostles did with their shadows. Sent you a napkin you know, or... Yeah, yeah. No, no, hey, I don't even need a napkin or a handkerchief, Nick, uh, Nate. He just could did it over the phone, man. I got that faith to where I believe, and I wouldn't have even had to spend my holiday in the hospital. I wouldn't have to spend it in there. But I'm, I'm, I'm going to land quick, and I'm going to get up out of here. Thanks again, man, for bringing me up here yeah, also, too. Uh, show me a original apostle like the 12 of the apostolic age, and I'll show you a dead apostle. Thank you. <laughs> but it's good to hear from you. Um, I don't even know where to go now. Um, I don't know. See you. Back to you. Take this thing wherever you want. Um, I don't have anywhere to take it either. It's um, a bit all oh. over the place. <laughs> I, I think Michael was trying to. Michael was trying to say something a few minutes ago. I think Michael. Oh, no, I think yeah. I'm not sure if uh, yeah if, if I was heard. I'm, I may have been in a bad spot. You know, certain parts of the grocery store are not conducive to uh, cell phone service, but no, like, like I was saying, like I don't have a like I don't have a dog in this fight, right? You know, I I just think that if it is, you know, and I guess now having this bit of clarification, I'm I'm happy. This will sound weird, but I'm happy that Sean doesn't have that capacity, because what a burden that would be, knowing that he had this ability and didn't employ it um, to basically heal everybody. 
Um, but no, I, like, I, I think it's just, you know, and there may, there may have been a point at which I was, you know, confused about definitions and stuff like that based on how Rebecca and, and Locked and, and Apostle and everything were, were kind of uh, going back and forth about those types of things. But uh, yeah, I think the whole thing is, is interesting. I get very, I think like you, Nate, like when somebody kind of, you know, uses certain language in a, you know, in a certain way, um, it's going to provoke the side eye, right? Like, you know, like, what are you talking about? Um, you know, and for me, that's most of the time when somebody says that there's a God. Okay. So I do, I do remember the point. Sorry, Nate. Um, so Chris, the idea of the Holy Spirit prompting you, how far do you take that? Does the Holy Spirit prompt and to what degree does it prompt? Right. So prompting is even jellyfish nonsense. Um, the Holy Spirit convicts us of sin. Um, he has a whole list of stuff that he does in John 16. And I'm driving right now or I'd read it to you. But uh, this idea of prompting comes from in, in evangelicalism wider. It's a, it's a charismatic idea, but it comes from Henry Blackaby and his book, Knowing God. Um, and so that infiltrated Baptist churches where I was, I was in a Southern Baptist church when I was a teenager and his book had just come out and our church was going through it. And what it is, it is a distortion of the scriptures to attempt to teach that God whispers to you and gives you these promptings and ideas. And exactly what Locke is saying is that if God is not speaking to you, Henry Blackaby actually said this, that if God is not speaking back to you in prayer, that you do not have a spiritual relationship. And so this is a common misconception amongst charismatics that uh, Jim Osmond answers really well in his book, God Doesn't Whisper. Um, God is specific and clear with his revelation. He does not give us new revelation. He does not, we do not open the Bible and we're given new revelation. We can be given application of our sinful behavior from the scripture and we can be convicted by the Holy Spirit from reading scripture and from just being around other Christians. Well, but there's a... The Holy um... Spirit, Wait, can I respond? There's a strange. Well, what? Well, lot. Well, 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 let me say one more thing to him, and him respond. Then you can go. I'll shut up. I promise. So, Chris, there's. Uh, I, I guess I would. I feel like it's a little disjointed in the sense that, like, if as a Calvinist you believe all things are ordained, and if Locke is in a setting where she feels something saying to her that someone who she doesn't know is struggling with addiction she communicates that in some way to that person that person is indeed struggling with addiction according to the way you see the world you believe that was always ordained to happen that that was always going to be the case to happen so can you just reconcile all that right so you that's that's coming from a misunderstanding of god's decree so i mean we can get into that but that's just not a valid criticism. So, uh, yeah. The, yeah. So that's, yeah. I mean, so CEO, we can have a longer conversation about how God's decree actually works. That's not how God's decree works. Um, but my point is that you can have imaginations and all kinds of other things. It is her thoughts that are telling her these things. The Holy Spirit is not whispering to her in that still small voice or anyone else for that matter specific revelations about other people that just doesn't happen now there's a naturalistic rec explanation for that uh, mike bickle did cold readings all the time mike bickle was the gold standard of modern day prophets okay he was the he was set up by michael brown dr michael brown and dr sam storms who are content and wayne grudem for that matter as the gold standard for prophets that are a hundred percent correct in the modern era turns out mike bickle and all of his prophecies and all of his stuff he was a child molester the entire time oh and that just came out a couple of months ago like th this kind of thing it, it makes us crazy 
because what it's doing is it's saying that the word of God is a pile of trash that should be disregarded for my feelings. And that's what angers Christians. Well, and tying into that book you mentioned, there's a book called Decision Making in the Will of God. Uh, he actually references it and says it's part of uh, something read, I think. But when you have a subjective experience and you think it's godly and you do something, how do you know this God or not? And what we what we're saying is the only way you can know something God has it's said. It's God zero percent of the time, Nick. Though it's zero for anyone who's ever had that experience in history. It's God zero percent of the time. Nick? What, what I'm saying yes. is the only way you can know something is God is if it's in His Word. The only way, the only thing we know God has said is in His Word. So whatever kind of subjective experience you may have. You don't know if that's from God or not. And I would say God doesn't speak that way. That would be that would say the word of God is insufficient. So if if there is something in the word of God and it's a command or whatever, an encouragement, and you say, huh, I feel like I'm led by the spirit to you know do this or but that's not being led. That's that's just being obedient. Like you don't have to have some kind of mystical experience from God to know we're called to obey scripture. So if scripture commands you to, you know, love your neighbor. And you say, oh, this, the Holy Spirit's co prompting me to say this to my neighbor or do this or what. You don't need a prompt from the Holy Spirit. You need to just be obedient because the Scripture already commands you to do that. So what a lot of people were saying are promptings by the Spirit are just things that Scripture already commands us to do. You don't need some special subjective experience to know you're supposed to obey Scripture. Um, so, yeah, and, and what, what the guy says in the book uh you can pile subjective experience on top of subjective experience, and it's still subjective. You still, how do you know if that's from God? How do you know? The only way you can know something is from God is if it's in his word. And that's our point. There's a lot of people who say they have something from God, a lot of people on TV who are heretics, false teachers, blasphemous, and they say all of this is coming from God. So how do you know uh, whatever you're experiencing is from God? The only way you can know for certain is if whatever it is is in his word. And I would I would say that's why the word is sufficient. We 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 can't we don't have to go by subjective feelings or impressions or whatever. God has told us all that we need to know in His Word. We don't need subjective revelation. And that's that's why people, you know, all these things that God doesn't tell us specifically, like what job to take, who to marry, all these different things. God hasn't laid that out in the Scripture. That that is not something He's told us specific the specific person. What we do know. God has told us to marry a Christian. God has told us this. God, he's given us wisdom, and we have freedom to make choices with that wisdom he's given us. We don't have to have a special prompting to know exactly. Oh, I have to know exactly what job. God has to lead me. He has to tell me. He has to do this or that person, marry all this. You know, he, he doesn't have to do that. He's given, us, he's given us principles to follow. Where he hasn't given us direct demand, command, we have principles. So we follow those principles. And we trust that God is sovereign over, you know, whatever we do. Uh, he can work it out in, in a way that, that is his will. But, yeah, we don't have to have a word for every little decision we make. We have scripture. I'm, and, I'm and gonna bring up. Wait, hang on, lost, hang on, hang on. Real, real quick, it's one sentence. Y'all keep sabotaging me if I'm talking. So, look, just it's, I have one sentence. Finding, quote unquote, finding the will of God as if it's lost is a pagan idea. There's an entire book called A Pagan Notion, Finding the Will of God. That's that's a pagan notion. All right, cool. So now, number one, again, I wish things would stop getting thrown on me. That's not true. This book, I literally never heard of this book. God doesn't whisper. So actually, Daddy, you were wrong. I was not getting out a book I never read that I didn't even know existed. I've never read that book in my life. I don't know that author. I have no idea what that book is talking about. So I don't appreciate you saying yeah, that I'm, I'm gonna getting... I'm going to stop you right there. I'm going to no, stop you right there. Why are you stopping me? I didn't say me. because you're saying false things because you hear things, and I, I don't know what's wrong, but like... I don't I hear anything. Said, you said I was getting right at there. that. Stop right there. No. What, what I was saying is using a phrase. I wasn't saying that you've read the book or you know the author or anything like that. And again, you're burning down a straw man and you've done this 18 times on no, stage I'm not. today. Yes, you are. Because I never said, did anybody hear me say that she has read the book, God Doesn't You whisper? said that's what I was no. saying. No, no, no. He said where that idea came from. He no, didn't say yeah, you read exactly. the book. Yeah. My idea didn't come from that either. So it's still right. right. No, no. 
You, you, yeah, you're completely you just do not even try to address the book because you just didn't understand. Yeah, I would like the right to speak like everybody different. else had, actually. No one else. Well, no, but when you're but bearing me. false witness, then we're going to stop you. I'm not bearing false you witness. You are. You just said that I ma that I said that you read the book. That is not what I said. I'm not bearing false witness. I did not say that you said I read the book. You said that that's what I was getting at. And then I said, how could I be getting at something that I never read and didn't know existed? So anyway, as I'm going to finish without anyone sabotaging me again, like has been done over and over and over again, I'm going to say the truth. You're not going to derail me from saying the truth. I don't care if you believe it or not. So I asked this question. I love how convenient it was for everybody to skip over it. I think it's because you can't answer it. So I'm going to ask the question again, just like you asked me a million questions. I'm expecting someone to answer. If you have a relationship and we look at what relationship means, which is an exchange of two parties, it's not one-sided. How, if you have a relationship with God, are you saying to me that when you pray, you do not ever hear anything back from God. So your relationship with God is you read the Bible, you talk to God, but he never says anything to you. It, only thing you do is read what he has to say, but he never says anything to you. Yes. Because okay. that's the Christian that's okay. religion. That, well, hold on, hold on. That's the Christian religion. The religion that you are speaking of is more akin to Mormonism or some other type of cult. And again, this is the type of thing that came about with the restorationist movement, as well as with people like Smith, uh, Smith Wigglesworth, um, uh, John Alexander Dowie, uh, you know, uh, uh, William J. Seymour, all of these charismatic things. You have been deceived Whoa, into why, thinking why are you, the religion. Why, just, why are you doing that, doing saying, saying evil things about women and people? Because those people were evil. William so Seymour, what did William Seymour do to you? William J. Okay. Seymour died in an insane asylum from knowing that whatever he was preaching was false. Okay? Like, uh, said, William J. Seymour okay. was okay. a heretic. Where, and, where and let's be really, really uh, clear no, 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 here. No, 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 Again, I, I, like, Azusa I, I, Street was you, false. No, it wasn't. Like, all of this I'll, is so all the, so, so you just all I'm Sean. Sorry. No, Chris, I'm not going to let you do that. Do you're not going to tell every truth. Pentecostal, you're not going to throw the whole Pentecostal movement down like that. I'm the gonna entire lie. Pentecostal movement is a move of Satan. Let's go. Oh, oh really? So I, oh, so I hold it. When you say that, you're saying I'm not saved. Are you saying that, Chris? No, that's not what I said. I said that you're deeply, no, 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 I, no, no, I said no, no, that no. you are because deeply I'm a deceived Christian. You know that I'm a worldly yeah, yeah, ideology yeah. that denies the sufficiency what, of Scripture. What, 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 what? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hey, have you ever heard me teach anything that's outside of Uh, yeah, a lot. Really? Go to, I, I'll invite you, go on my YouTube channel, and I have teachings there. All my teachings are on there. Show me why I'm, I'm going to go straight from, straight from Scripture. Yeah. Did, we not see in, did we not see in scripture how God spoke? So wait, wait, wait. So there's no scripture with God speaking to anybody? Is that My what you're goodness. saying now? No. Um, the, the scripture is the once and for all divine direct revelation. That wasn't the question. You do not get divine direct revelation any longer. That wasn't the question. So I'm going to repeat the question again, right? Because comprehension is key. Is there not scriptures where God spoke to somebody? Yes or no? Yes, and he always did it audibly. He never whispered. I never, first of all, see, here we go again. I never even said the word whisper. So I don't know why you're emphasizing that to me. I never said that. So I guess that's for someone else, and that's fine. I never said the word whisper at all while I'm talking. So that's how we know I, once again, I have to clear that up again. I'm not speaking to that, but oh. I'm speaking the point that I, the point that I am speaking to that seems to keep getting blatantly ignored is if you're saying that it is satanic for somebody to say, Hey, you know, sometimes when I pray, yeah, the Lord responds, I can talk to God. Then you're basically also against the scriptures where God talked to somebody. 
I don't think he said that either. It's like both everyone is doing that. Like both sides are saying something, and then the other side says, I did not say that. You bore false witness. And the next breath, they do the exact same thing that they said was just done to them. Like I, I've watched this this entire morning. Like when Chris says that God doesn't whisper, he's immediately going to people who have spent much of their lives exploring this topic, right? So when you said, All I want to know is, is it bad to say God speaks to you or does God speak to you? Like you're saying it very, uh, very simple and like rudimentary. The Chris is jumping to the like the most extreme, like people who have dug in on this topic. So he is then trying to say he thinks you got this idea from this place, the guy that's expounded it like super, super um, in depth that you've never heard of. You said that's fine, uh, but that's what he's doing. He's saying, look, by you saying, do you ever hear God? Does God ever speak? Like in these very general terms you're getting at the very idea that was addressed by this other person very, very, very in depth. And it, it just, everything everyone is saying is just completely going past the other person, either because they want it to, or it legitimately is. And everyone's just talking past each other. Like, you know, when Chris said the entire Pentecostal movement is satanic, like that's my background. I'm fine with it. Like I wouldn't call it satanic, but also I'm not going to yell and scream at Chris and, you know, say all this other stuff either. Like, if it was appropriate, it'd be like, hey, Chris, we just disagree on that. Um, I said that several times and it got ignored. What do you mean? I said it's okay if we disagree. And then everybody proceeded to take slick, say slick comments and make shots at me well after I said I digress. So it's not like I'm the aggressor here. We're not going to do that. That wasn't for you. That was... Uh, well, well, I'm not going to be told what I'm not going to do. I, I wasn't directing no, that to not, you. That was for I, But I'm asking you, Nate. Well, let me ask you then, because I genuinely want to know. Like, I'm not, it's, forget all the other points, right? I already said if it's not a heaven and hell issue, I really don't care. But I really am curious to know. I, I asked it to the whole stage. It's not even just about Chris anymore or Nick. I don't care. Do does Has God ever, Nate, for you, it, you don't have to answer, but if you don't mind, I'd like you to. And your walk with Christ, like you said, you've been doing it for a minute, whatever. Okay, cool. Has God ever spoken to you at all? I'm not saying a whisper. I'm not saying none of that idea. I'm just saying in general. Has God ever said anything to you in any way? Yeah, I'll say 100% yes. And, you know, Chris and I just disagree. I also hear Chris. Whenever he's like, because I make the same point. I'm like, look, I will attribute it to God. Like there are certain things that if I'm being honest to myself and my convictions, I cannot attribute to anything other than God. That doesn't mean in my human brain, I can't be wrong. So I'll make the same points Chris will make. The only difference is I leave room for, you know, I mean, not saying Chris is saying this. He wouldn't say God has limits, but it's like, you know, I'm going to breathe the Bible. You don't have to. I'm, I'm not trying to pull one of those things. But, you know, I'm, I'm not limiting God. I believe God can do what God wants. I believe God can, you know, uh, give a word, impress people, guide someone, lead someone, use whatever adjective or term you want. But, you know, I, I would say, yes, I believe God has spoken to me um, at times in my life. Um, I also am fully aware that when Chris is like, maybe you had a bad taco the night before. That's fair. That could well, very well be. But if I'm being honest with myself, I would attribute that to nothing else than God. Um, and then, you know, Chris will be like, well, I disagree. And I'm like, well, I disagree too. And they're like, you want to have lunch? They're like, great. Is it tacos? Maybe we'll have more visions. Yeah, but you know the difference is, Nate? Okay, you see how you said that? All right, cool. I'm not going to continue and make strong claims against your salvation. And I think it's unfair to, as a Christian to do that and expect somebody not to def, like say something back. That was the difference. He's not coming for your salvation and now calling you a heretic. Like all that. It's like, why are you going that far? Just disagree. You don't have, have to you not act, met Chris before? Me. Wait, she did? No, not really. not know who Chris is? Not really, Nate. Not really, though. <laughs> to be honest, I can't say I know him. I can't. I really can't say that so you know you do if someone is. didn't hear from god you didn't think they were a christian you did say if someone didn't hear from she god you didn't think they were a christian yo so. i really she yo said, nick nick listen i promise you i really do give up because i i just wanted someone on this stage i just wanted to know if anybody heard from god yeah, I, I hear surrender. from god every time I read whatever you say you agree with that okay but i'm i totally give up so you're just gonna be arguing with yourself now i'm done well, let's see. Do you mind if I do Nate just from a, from yeah. a neutral perspective? Uh, Michael, and then China? there was Marcus, who's new. Uh, yeah, go ahead, Michael. Yeah, and then just, I just from a Marcus from a neutral perspective. So, so look, when I was a Christian, I I believed that I heard 
like I believe that I heard from God. I, I had a, like when I was a believer, I, I had the firm conviction that I heard that stuff. Um, but I, I think just um, kind of with an accent on charitability, which is sometimes my forte and sometimes not so much, but with a kind of with an accent on, on charitability. Um, I think what people are doing up here generally, and it, it always happens, and I'm not telling you something you don't already know, um, is people are just sharing their opinions, right? Opinions are like noses, everybody's got one. Um, and what, what I will say, not that Chris needs me to white knight for him in any way, shape, or form, is that, is that Chris is incredibly forward with his convictions. And I think sometimes he's harsher than he needs to be. But I, but I don't take what Chris says personally because I, I've grown to understand that Chris is just very forward and very blunt with what he believes. Um, and from a, from the standpoint of a, a mental health care uh, professional, um, just what I would advise you, and, and I'm, not, I'm not trying to trigger you at all, uh, so please don't take it that way. Um, m- maybe just try to take a, like a, a zoom out from a 30,000 foot view and see how that is. Because I understand when things can get so um, pointed, how people throw their backs up and their defenses up. And the first thing that happens when people's defenses go, go up is their ears close and they stop really actively listening to the things that people are saying. That's all. Um, mm-hmm. And I, I mean, just to point I this out, as the, said, I, I'll give you the, the last word here in a second, Nick, because I'm going to have to run. But Michael, I, I, and I know just because, you know, you, you um, relied on that mental health care professional point, just to say, again, colloquially only, I said that word right. Um, it's a tough one to say. But when we say God speaks to us or whatever, I mean, except like three people I've met who's like, no, God audibly spoke to me. And I'm like, okay. And I just, you know, take a step slightly back. But most people, when they say, you know, God spoke to me, almost everyone is talking about like, you know, they, they feel a certain way or they got a certain feeling or, you, you know, something like that, not like they're hearing voices, just in case there was any confusion. Unless someone is about to tell me right now, God audibly spoke to them, in which case we're about to close their room anyway. But uh, Nick, uh, go ahead and have a final word. Please don't make any digs at anyone because that's just going to make you not no, have no, a final I'm just word. Gonna, so just give us a happy respond. parting message. <clears throat> no, I, I was just going to answer the question of God speaking to us in prayer. Well, there may be a thousand things I could be praying about. I may be praying about something and a scripture may come to mind that deals with that situation. Is that God speaking to me? Uh, I think that's what the scriptures that have stored up your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Uh, yeah, the scripture, God can bring scripture to mind about a certain situation. And I consider that God, you know, speaking. I think scripture is God speaking. So when I read scripture, that is God speaking to me. And when a scripture comes to mind that deals with a certain uh, situation I'm praying about, that is God's word to me about that situation. If I'm dealing with some kind of, you know, conflict at work and a scripture comes up about how to deal with conflict or how I'm supposed to act, that is God's word to me about what I'm supposed to do in that situation. I don't need something outside of scripture to uh, to tell me what to do. God has told me. So, yeah, I consider that God speaking. There's plenty of times I pray for forgiveness or whatever, and a scripture comes up, a uh, gospel, and it reminds me of things. So that is God's way of speaking to us through his word. Uh, it doesn't have to be extra biblical. It doesn't have to be a voice or any of that. So, yeah, I think scripture is sufficient.